time's up. Admiral. Here it comes. Give me the meat and give it to me raw. What's the matter? <gasps> Take yourself a great big bite of meat. Taste the pleasure of the highest quality pork around. And then one day happened. Happen, Adam. You let the reach around happen. I. <laughs> I don't know why I put that analogy. I'm trying, out, I'm, it's just, I'm it's, trying to get around that one and looking at the time so I can come back and clip it later. But we're told that we don't like any of this because we're misogynists. We just don't like this stuff because we're women. And the only reason we're unhappy about the Ray movie coming out, because, guys, did you hear the Ray movie was canceled and uncanceled? Did you hear that? Uh, Dre, uh, you heard that too, right? I did. I did hear it. Wait, I, I, I did do? hear it. What did I do? Did you, I? You said because we're women. <laughs> we we hate it because we're women. <laughs> okay. I said All right. Yeah. I see now. Ariel just arrived, and she's going to make sure that I remember that. Next, yes, and we didn't want it to come out like this, but Adam is in fact trans. He's coming out of the closet. Him and Dermy are in a relationship. It, it's time. It's still there. <laughs> it's still I there. I didn't say that. We want to enjoy what we're looking at. We don't want sores and fat whores. Liar! No. Let me be as clear as I can. Ain't no colors in Scandinavia. <laughs> Game over, man. It's game over. Hello and howdy, everybody. Welcome back to the round table where we go over the week's events in our own little special way. Where I usually put my foot in my mouth at some point. Hey, it happens. Uh, and we try to have a good time with it. Uh, I mean, there's, a, there's still the question. Are you ready for the reach around? No, I'm not. <laughs> I forgot about that. It's It's uncomfortable. Listen, the whole situation would be uncomfortable, and I would just want it to be over as quickly as possible if it was happening. So, anyway, uh, hi, everybody. Welcome back. We got a good show for you today. Only really two topics, but there's a lot to talk about in these two topics, so it should be good. Hi, Jed. It's like I never see you. I'm going to run that joke into the ground forever. I don't care. Oh, yeah, that will be our permanent way to yeah. introduce each other, but it is great to be here. I'm excited to talk about Fallout because it, it should be a nuanced discussion, not mm. a it's the greatest thing ever, and if you don't believe that you're an evil person, we're not going to yeah. have that type of discussion. So I'm looking forward to having a nuanced discussion about Chicken Fallout. Bigot. I know. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just and it. that's going to be a good one, and that's why uh, we've asked Ryan to join us today because Ryan – is a fallout guy he's a fallout lore guy so he's going to be able to carry certain parts of the conversation that i cannot so i, Ryan, I am oh, thank, you, I, thank you for joining us today yeah no thanks for having me here dude um i i really want to talk about this because um again i'm a massive fallout fan i highly enjoyed the show uh probably more than you guys due to the fact that i love fallout is it perfect no no there's there's some issues um there's a big issue i'll talk about later on timeline wise but I'm 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 really glad to be here, and I'm glad to say I was I was wrong about this show. Mm -hmm. I was, and I say it to too. This. I was wrong. I said it in my review, which I've recorded prior to this show. I have to edit it. You guys will get my episodes three through eight review, and we're done here today. But I'll say it now: I was wrong, and I can admit that. In fact, but, we're happy we were wrong, and you specifically yeah. were wrong because that's we win when we're wrong. We get good yeah. entertainment when we're wrong. But, Unlike the, the people on the other side of these arguments when they're never going to admit they're wrong. But there isn't our nuance to being wrong. There's a mm -hmm. lot there, there, There's a lot that goes into it where we could say I was wrong about the show, but in the in the lead up with what we had to work with, I don't take back anything I said in my original takes because mm -hmm. that was the news. That was the commentary. Mm -hmm. It's all fair yeah. for the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Based the on Dragon, the information we had. Dragon Lady, how are you? Good evening. All right, I'm um, probably the only one who's going to be quite silent during the Fallout book because I have absolutely no idea. Well, I've heard of the games but never actually played them, and okay. I have no interest in the okay. TV series because I don't have Amazon Prime. So, <laughs> well, well, neither do I. 
I, I got uh, a great website if you want to see all the high seas. I don't know, neither do I. And Dre is not here because he is at a convention working the work, working his book and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, we have we, we wish him the best of luck out there. He's been having a good time. Go check out. He's been putting up some stuff on social media. Uh, he he said he might try and check in. So we make it we make it a Dre out of nowhere. I tried to make it up there, but because I had to get the fallout thing done this morning, I did not have the time to take the drive out to go see him. But either way, uh, we hope Dre's having a good time, and we will see him back here next week where he will give his take on this if he wants to, and he will continue to update us on X Men ninety seven, which also. I may have been wrong about, but there's still five episodes to go on that. Yeah. So they could still go pear shaped. That's plenty of time to go pear shaped on that. But at the moment, it looks like I'm wrong on that one too, which I admitted as much on Wednesday. It's okay to admit you're wrong. There's nothing, there's nothing bad about it at all. Mm -mm. All right. So we're obviously going to talk Fallout and we are going to go back to something that is more my wheelhouse as well than Star Wars, Outlaws. The uggification <laughs> oh. of women in Western gaming and these people who are supporting it. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen the discourse on the Twitter. Yeah. It's yes. weird. It's it is. weird to say the least. And there's also some practical stuff surrounding outlaws that make you scratch your head. Jed, as an Ubisoft former guy, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to have something to say about some of the marketing strategy for this game. But before we do that, uh, let's go say hello and howdy to the chat. Hail the goddess. One of my mods, one of my regulars here to keep the peace, be my personal troll, and make sure that he tries to convince everybody that a death is a death, but a death is not always a death. Uh, if you know, you know. Uh, going on down the list, let's keep saying hello. Uh, hail, good afternoon, Kale. How are you? Hail, third eye 47. I'm, and I saw your, your later chat. I have Fallout 4. If I'm going to replay anything, it's going to be that one because I already own it. I do not have it in my budget, even on sale, because the my gaming budget has already been locked down for the next couple of games. I cannot get Fallout 3 or New Vegas, but Jed has it, and Jed can really be the one to carry that load for me in terms of that. Uh, well, I have a full playthrough of that on my channel, if anyone wants to see. It's actually the Doctor Who mod of Fallout New Vegas that I have, yeah. so if you guys are interested, there's a playlist for Someday, that. Someday, maybe but not in the near future. If maybe by the time they get around season two, which could be probably two years away, at least maybe, but I make no promises. Um, anyway, hail to son of jocks or huzzah, my friend. Hail Ruben X. How are you? Hail Jay Fraser 360. Good afternoon. Masquerade. Uh, hail to, let me see, make sure I get everybody. Hail Sam 8,000. Yes. F Disney Star Wars. Anybody else <laughs> not chatting and just watching. We're happy to have you here with us on this Sunday afternoon where there's usually a lot of stuff going on. And if you're on your way back from Vegas, I hope everybody had a good time there. I hope you've had a safe journey home and are ready to share your adventures in Vegas. Uh, Dermy didn't get hurt enough from what I hear. Not enough pain. Oh. They did. They didn't do the tasing. And they didn't do the what? pepper spray because they forgot. They all forgot to bring the tasers and the pepper spray. <laughs> they forgot. There, there's shenanigans there. I'm sorry. They I'm forgot. official degree they, of shenanigans. They forgot. That's bullshit. They, the people who were in charge of doing it forgot to bring the materials. Oh, my God. I saw him bring it up on the combo uh, Skin and Max Ballbuster show where Dermot's like, yeah, uh, there are sports shops around here. And nobody's going to get this. So I'm okay with that. Now, I'm going to bring it up on Friday when we go back to more ball busters that there needs to be payment. He yeah, took the money the for that damage. For it. Mm -hmm. they, he, he took, took a money lot of money. Damage. So I'm going to say, hey, guess what? Let's eat some more chips. and eat, Let's eat some more chips. Mm -hmm. let's, I, think he needs to, I think he needs to buy a damn taser and tase himself and pepper no, spray himself. No, no, no that's, I do. That's, that's not funny. That's not funny enough. I need to see him preparing for it and not knowing when it's going to happen and then having it happen. Uh, You're going to do some more stuff with the plushies. Oh, well, he, he well, I, I saw, he, he, dude, dude, he tongue, did you reference. see he tongue the J doll? He did that one too. He did, oh, he did, he did that willingly. God, that's what that of was. Of course, he did that one willingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's too uh, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll Rocky the Black Dragon, see you coming in there. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm going to demand on friday that uh more pain and punishment be delivered yeah people people bought and paid for his suffering while suffering hey, is somebody who, who 
somebody who has a background in law enforcement, being pepper sprays and tased both is not fun. So he needs he needs to do it a couple couple Fridays in a row. Something needs to happen. Sucks. We might need to leave it up for leave it up to the chat. Listen, yeah, Dermy's chat may be very generous, but they're also evil. It better not be. And, and the, well, listen, I'm listen. I'm the worst grade. It's really bad. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. And, it's not. I mean, fun. it's so bad. I mean, because of current situations, I wanted my mom to be safe. She has a police grade pepper spray in her purse. Yeah. So uh, she, in lieu of other things, which we cannot get in our current situation where we are, uh, it lasts for hours too. Yeah. So I understand that's just bad. That's why I said yes. You're you're keeping this in your purse so that shit don't happen. Um, but I want I want pain visited. And Dermy, if you are watching this on replay, because I know he watches this stuff on occasion, he does catch up sometimes. Uh, I'm I'm gonna make a point of this. I'm making a point. I'm not letting this go. <laughs> it's my job. On Ballbusters, to remind yeah, he'll anyway. probably definitely watch this one because he's he's a big Fallout fan too. Yeah. Oh well, he was gonna when we thought it was weekly, he was gonna join us throughout the duration. Mm -hmm. So we uh, definitely have to talk about that because that is weird how they that's, changed. That's going to be part of the conversation today. It's it's definitely mm -hmm. strange considering this is obviously a win, but we're not going to yes. start that. Uh, I want I we're gonna we're gonna that's the second half. We're gonna start today with. Outlaws. That's where I want to start because I, I want to get I want to go to my wheelhouse first because it's it's my it's my show. Um <laughs> uh have we all seen the Outlaws story trailer? Unfortunately, yes. I, I have not, but oh! trust me, I know it's yeah, going around. What? Guess what? We're gonna watch God. it. <laughs> well, let's do it. We have to do it. I have seen it. Scaring I've given to the my, skid. we have to. This thing, this is a story trailer. Now we're watching it for content. Not so much gameplay. We Ryan, you were here when we went over the gameplay trailer last year. Yes. And commented yeah, I... on, on just about everything else that we're going to comment here. Mm -hmm. And for the record, for those who want to cry, we said she was ugly a year ago. Okay? We well, said yeah, a year she looks ago. frumpy. And then you what look at the actual frumpy? model. Like, are you serious? Oh, we're, we're, yeah, we're going to get that. I got that all lined up. But Ugh. let's let's get this started right here. Uh, this is Ubisoft. Jed. Did you have ever any confidence in this when it was oh, announced? Oh, God, no. Ubisoft's no. been dead for years for mm -hmm. me, and Mirage is just further proof of that. Mirage was so bad. But, yeah, a combination of Disney and Ubisoft, I knew it had to be a disaster. Just two juggernauts of stupidity working together. It's going to turn mm -hmm. out great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, listen, this – I'm going to state this now. I said it in my take earlier this week. This is more – Disney Star Wars trying to stretch out the period of time between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. It's only a year and a half. And they just keep piling all the stuff in there. And there there and there's even in the reason. Well, there's reasons. Let's get to it. Let's start this. Each of you represents some of the most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy. Note that most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy that Disney made up. I, I, I just have <laughs> one one criticism already. Is this Game yeah. of Thrones we're watching? What is that? I don't know, <laughs> but this is Slero. His name is Slero. I, I'm being serious though. It looks like he looks like they, they plucked mm -hmm. him from Game of Thrones. Yeah. That's what I thought. Well, he's apparently our big bad, sort of. I don't know. Well, anyway, Pikes. The Pikes made up. By Disney. Mm -hmm. There's a theme to this episode. I'm sorry, this trailer. And it's not just the fact that it's bad. It's that it's just reinforcing Disney Star Wars lore. While moving farther away from actual Star Wars lore. Crimson Dawn. Crimson uh, Dawn. Dead. Legitimizing Kira, who's apparently in the game. Is she? Oh, yes, God. there's there is a screenshot. We're gonna get to it when we're done with this. Yes, uh -huh. they are they are trying to legitimize solo to this mm -hmm. day. And there are people going, You just hate it. Why are you just hating it to hate? No, because it was bad. It was and it, bad, and it ruins lore. It, it was you bad. Know. And the, the only good point, the only good part of that movie was the fact that Ray Park was in it and he wasn't even in it that much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and and uh Jay Fraser bring this up. Yes, the K K Vess is from Canto Blight. Mm -hmm. Canto Blight. What a blight! Hey, that's actually better. Canto Blight. It's a blight on on, yeah. on storytelling. 
Uh, yeah, she, she probably helped uh, Bush work in the casino, founded the casino, yeah. and whatnot. But yeah. uh, did any of you guys watch the story breakdown from Disney, from Ubisoft? No. They did oh, yes. a... Yeah, I watched that. I watched that. Were the yeah. Pikes did... in Clone Wars? Jed, were they in Clone Wars? Yes. They yes, were. they were in season seven at least. I think oh, they were so, in other seasons. Oh, oh F7. F7. F uh, seven. I think they might have been in the other ones as well, but they were most prominent in seven. But um, in the story breakdown trailer, they talked about that Crimson Dawn chick and said uh, she's the epitome of poise and elegance and and just that expression mm-hmm. on her face says it all. That's what Disney thinks. A like <laughs> woman looks like just bitchy. Yeah, and now they're gonna. Then we got the huts. Huts. Okay. Uh, you know what's missing? Black Sun and Shizor. That's what's missing. Prince Shizor, head of the Black Sun, who has the Emperor's ear, who manipulates everything, who is one of the more powerful organizations. Um, well, I, there's still a Dave Filoni creation, though. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say that there's still a Dave Filoni creation, which is just as bad. I don't remember them from Clone Wars. I I, I watched seasons one through six a couple times. I don't remember them. Uh, and it's, it's, this, he made them more of a thing than they are though. Yeah. Season but, seven is when they became a real big thing. Uh, it looks like the pikes were developed, uh, for the clone wars and de- debuted in season five. Wow. Okay. So it must've been really brief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, was, I've, I've heard of the pikes, but not a whole lot. And yeah, by they, then George was checked out by then by season five, he was not active much anymore. Baloney was completely running the show because that's when we got uh that's when we got the destruction of Mandalorians, the mm-hmm. making them pacifists, we and all that shit. So yeah, Baloney George was doing other shit at that point, I think. Uh, he was not paying attention as much. Anyway, yeah, but uh it's they're not a thing. They aren't a thing. The huts are a thing. Black Sun was a thing. The Crimson Sun and the Pikes are not a thing. They're not a thing. I'm sorry. They aren't a thing. It's a golden age for the underworld. The Empire controls every corner of the galaxy. That's a lie. That's not... The, yeah, nobody controls the Uncharted Territories. Not even the Chiss, the Chiss control all the Uncharted Territories. This is Disney. Nothing matters. And mm-hmm. it changes every entry. And the Outer, and the outer Rim... Of the known part of the galaxy is not controlled by the empire. It's controlled by the underworld. By there's a thing called hut space, and yes, it has shrunk since the time of the glory days of the old republic, but it's it's there. It's not. They don't control every corner of the galaxy. That's retarded. Yeah. Also, at the same time, I don't like the empire wouldn't be necessarily on board with the underworld, like because they're modeled after a um, certain group from World War II who wanted total control they're, yeah. they're not going to just ignore you over there and be like oh mm-hmm. ah, they're doing their criminal thing whatever i mean no. and you, you can't they can't control all that because that's the whole reason if you go to the actual lore for the death star is to control by terror because they can't yeah. control everything because at that point at the beginning of new hope palpatine dissolves the senate and turns everything over to the moths of each territory to control so the while the Empire is a unit, it's a little decentralized where a moth is basically, as they say, a governor of a territory. And they yeah. can't cover everything. And the, and the Death Star's purpose was to enforce fear throughout yeah. the galaxy. And so you didn't have to be everywhere. Because the Empire doesn't have the resources to control everything. And in actual lore, the other reason the Death Star was created was because Palpatine was prepping for the Yuzhan Vong invasion that early on. He knew they were out there. He knew he didn't want to go too far out because he didn't want to catch their attention before he completed completely locking down the known galaxy and being ready for them. So it's it's well, it's just ridiculous. Go it's ahead. also why they destroyed Alderaan because it's like, well, if if you even just lie to us a little bit and resist, boom, mm-hmm. bye bye. Yeah, like we're not going to tolerate your crap. Like so, this is just it's bad storytelling these people don't know what they're talking about and that's why jed you're probably right the ubisoft is just gonna throw out a it's it's gonna look like a game that is sort of star wars but it's not gonna be star wars because these people aren't doing the research 
mm -hmm. it's also Disney. They don't care. They don't care at all. They, they oh, don't the, care. The, the maps are going to be big and empty. That's because it's Ubisoft an open world. Mm -hmm. It's an open world. We'll talk about more of that after this. Did by a rebellion that won't quit. It's an opportunity to make millions. Are you ready okay. for Girl Boss? It's such a bad haircut, too. Like, everything about her it's, is it, It's the worst 80s mullet I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's a very attractive woman. The actress? Oh, yes. Yeah. We, we, I have the evidence. We're going to get there. But here's the thing. Let's go back. You see her putting on her, her little jacket there. That's the lone bit of customization. You can change her outfit. And it'll give you more inventory slots. And you can change her speeder and her box ship. That's your customization in the game. They don't want you to go away from the Han Solo look. If they let you customize it, you wouldn't think it's all Han jackets Solo. and shit. It's all jackets mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, I do have to say, customizing your jacket is better than customizing your goddamn poncho. I never understood <laughs> that. I like Jedi Fallen Order, but I don't care about his poncho. I never once wore the poncho voluntarily. I, I, I believe they increased the customization for Survivor with Did hairstyles, they? facial hair. All kinds of. I, I haven't stuff. played Survivor, but yeah, I, I haven't either. I don't. I don't Poncho's bother. Are playing, so weird. I don't play Disney content. I don't. I, I was more interested. In, I, I want to customize my lightsaber, dudes. Like, going, that's mm -hmm. what I want. That's what they most. Did that. they did I want. That. I know they did, but like, I, I, yeah, I was. I'm with you, Jed. I, I didn't care about his outfit. Like, yeah, dude, whatever. His lightsaber is cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hail Sammy Thousand for the two dollars. Uh, the Galaxy would be better off if Thrawn won. <laughs> well, no, no, that, that's not, that's not the one from a, the Ahsoka show. <laughs> not not yeah, not 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 beer belly thrawn, real thrawn. Uh yeah. you see, that's the thing. Then and that's a nerd, that's a nerd tangent that I would love to get into tomorrow night on, on Mellow Mondays or in a month on Star Wars Day, which I won't mind bringing this back up on Star Wars Day. You've 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 bought this topic already, Sam 8000 for the Star Wars Day stream, which will happen on a Sunday after this show. By the way, uh, yeah, um, Thrawn might have handled the Yuuzhan Vong better. He might have. He might have. Anyway, thank you for two dollars, and I see some other people coming in while we're talking. Uh, hail to Last Tolan and hail to Boosh McFadden. How you doing, Boosh? Uh, all right. So they don't. Um, they don't want you to get away from uggification here. I think that's the thing. They they want you to accept her as looking like this. But we'll save that conversation for after we're done. Looks like she got hit in the face with a frying pan. She got hit in the face with flat. multiple her... ugly sticks while falling down the ugly tree. Okay. Her face <laughs> is just flat. Like going, it has weird. Dude, she's got a bigger cleft chin than I do. Yeah. And they added that in intentionally. They yeah. widened out her jaw a lot. I got a cleft in my chin. I and when I, whenever I lose enough weight, it becomes more visible. But it's there. But it's she's got a bigger one than I do. Lord. Just wait till uh, they add one from like a me, myself, and Irene, Jim Carrey's butt chin from the end of that one. Ooh. The underworld's favorite new scoundrel. Oh, don't, don't you just love that badass right there? And that's, that's just great. He wants you to think of Greedo. Yeah. We need it last. What do you want? Now, is he holding a thermal detonator there? Maybe. It looks too Cause... boxy. Why is she yeah, pulling it? A... doesn't look round enough. I mean, why is she pulling a gun on him here? It's 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 trying to make her look tougher than she is. Zarek Besh, they're new, rich, and lethal. You cross their boss, Slero. Slero. It's a great exposition. I hope the game is just as talented at writing as this trailer is. Slero. I really hate the name too. Slero. That name. That name. This Slero. game would go so much better if they just let you customize your character entirely. Yes. If you would just it. That would have removed 90% of what we're complaining about here. Because not only is it a bad character, but it's a bad character you're being forced to play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many different options you could have had. And if nothing else, Ubisoft hasn't really ever done a game like this, but more mm -hmm. like the Knights of the Old Republic stuff that you used to. You can choose your class. You can choose, like, you want to be a Jedi? Do you want to be a smuggler and customize your character? more to the cyberpunk route where you have different like maybe three lives you can pick and customize your character it would have worked yep. so much better. or let's just go the mass effect route your mm -hmm. command your 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 just your last name is all that matters and you're going to be that and yes we are going to get into that guys do not worry we're going to get into humberly gonzalez and now she's a pretty girl 
but she's a pretty girl. All right. So I love that modern haircut that everyone has. The men. You. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. Her. How, I will be pay dollars to donuts that K Vess is going to turn her around and they're going to be together. Switch sides. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't she surprise me. Yeah. Oh, this, not lesbian ends. This, this chick's supposed to be the best bounty hunter in the area. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't believe it. I can't. I can't do it with Disney Robbie's Star Wars anymore. Buy your freedom. Do a job by freedom. Remember the word freedom. Okay, let's just remember that word freedom. Well, right. and it's this job is just infiltrating a manor. Like you're just going into a mansion. That is not Star Wars enough. I'm sorry. The heist also, at of the same a manor. Time, the hiding skills are off the charts there with that fucking mm -hmm. poof coming up over the top of that. Yeah, yeah. That well, that well. Listen, he's got a very bad design. His box helmet yeah. cuts off his his and peripheral, peripheral yeah. vision. So this job, it's a death wish. Hey guys, look, Han Solo and Carbonite. Oh look, yeah, you you remember Han Solo, right? You love Han Solo. We yeah, definitely want, it's Han Solo. We definitely want more Disney things slotted in between other good movies, the six good movies. Yeah, definitely yeah, don't want to just go yeah. so far away from everything else that we don't have to think about. Now, movies. in a moment, we're gonna know exactly where she is here. I missed this when I did my take earlier in the week. I'm in. God, she's ugly. And that haircut on the dude, that's not a Star Wars haircut. That is a Los Angeles haircut. None of this. Uh, we'll, I, I, that's the next part of this topic. We're getting. I want to talk about the story right now. We'll get to her in a little bit. Out here, you live and die by your reputation. All right, here's another made-up faction in the underworld. Then Jed, Jed, you watched the uh you, you mentioned you watched the uh breakdown by the devs mm -hmm. on this thing. They say this is made up. They yep, have made they this up invented themselves. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this isn't real. You want to survive? Yeah, I need a female Mon Cal who's fat and has a gravelly voice. Definitely need you know? that. Um see, I see, there are there are we listen, we've had experience with female Mon Cal's in actual Star Wars. Uh uh Silgal. Jedi Master, Jedi Master Healer of Luke's Jedi Order. She's uh, great. Force healing. Well, it's what's it's not it's force healing in the sense that stimulating the body, not just video game force healing, yeah. which they which they did in Disney Star Wars. Because that Disney Star Wars took force healing from video games and made mm -hmm. it as opposed to force healing where we're stimulating the body to heal itself. Mm -hmm. Or in most famous case, when Silgal realizes she's a healer, and yes, I will get back to this someday. I swear. Um, I'll admit that the whole force healing thing in that movie didn't didn't really bother me as much. But what really bothered me is that it it depends on your level in the game, right? So, like mm -hmm. on when you start force healing in the game, it drains the out of you. Yeah. So she should have been to portray that when she healed the stupid snake. She should have been drained because no, she's not a master. She's she's oh, nobody special. She sucks. But she has experience and training, as some yeah. of our favorite chills collaborated to make a video on recently. Yeah, we don't she understand. Had, we just she was understand. running through the forest, guys. Do you see that? As running opposed through the to, yeah, as opposed to Silgal, who in the end of this book, slight spoilers, when Mon Mothma has been poisoned, she literally cell by cell draws the poison out with the force and is exhausted. Mm -hmm. when it's over. Yeah, it needs to be difficult. That's the thing that makes it okay. Is it needs to be yeah. very difficult to explain why Obi Wan couldn't do it to Qui Gon in Phantom Menace to explain yeah. Yeah. why Vader well, looks hey, so terrible. Listen, Qui Gon, he's just not man enough. Okay, he's not well, Reva. Well, enough. also too, Force Heal doesn't bring people back from the dead. So if the character's dead, they're dead. Yeah. So so literally, that's why I would I would lean towards the fact that like even if Obi Wan knew how to do it he wouldn't be able to heal, heal Qui Gon too. Yeah, he they, had they... enough time for a conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. It's in reality, the for sealing. there are Jedi healers. Yes, and and Obi Wan was he's based he's a warrior. He doesn't. Know yeah, he, he he is. Yeah, skill set. You either know how to do mm -hmm. it or you don't. And but Ray's perfect. Ray was perfect. She could do it. Yeah, she can do everything. Let's keep going. Perfect. No effort. Yeah. No, the players. You're new to this world. What's your problem? Come back when you're not. Jabba, right? Jabba! Hey, guys, Jabba the Hutt! Member? Seriously? Member? 
and it's Return of the Jedi job because right now, watch this one second here. Right there, you see it, you blink and you miss it. That's when she's looking at Han. So this yeah. is so this you can actually drop this in the Disney timeline after there. They they had this whole retarded comic arc where everybody was trying to get their hands on Han and Boba Fett loses him for a while. And that's where Kira and the Crimson Dawn come into play and all this retarded shit. So, so it's not just in the year before, uh, in between Empire and Return of the Jedi. It's like in the months before Return it's of the months, Jedi. It's months. We are now literally months before Return of the Jedi here. You can place it. We are months before. Return. So she is now actively involved in events leading up to Return well, of it, the Jedi. If it's months, Lando might already be in the palace. Yeah. And, look, and I, somebody else pointed this out. I missed it. How do you like them skinny Gamorrean mm -hmm. guards right there? I yeah, missed that. It's not a thing. I missed that. Uh, yeah. no, yeah, because exactly. it's fat phobic to have goblin ogre looking guys, be even fat. even in Knights of the Old Republic, them some pudgy some bitches. Oh, Gamorreans are fat, yes, fat. they're pigs, they're warthogs, yes, they're, they're alien pigs who have very low intelligence, they're not smart, that's why they're fat hired as phobic. thugs. Hey guys, just just think about when, when they finally redo the original trilogy, now they can actually put her in Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. yeah. She'll be have a big party. Oh, it. oh, it's just gonna be like the thing. Guess what? Um, Ahsoka was there, or not Ahsoka? Rex, sorry, no, I'm not. Not Rex, sorry, not, not yeah. They, Rex they tried, and Hera. That's what, yeah. That's it. Sorry, that was it. Rex and Hera were there because Disney Star Wars says so. Hera was at Hera was on Hoth. Didn't you know that? Because Disney Star Wars says so. No. Yeah. And, no. That, and that stupid yes, no. retcon that the beard with the white dude, the dude with the white the beard mm -hmm. on Endor is Rex. That ridiculous retcon. It's, it's it's stupid and and they didn't even, even bother that. to oh, they didn't that. even bother to write that. in the character stuff with that because Rex knew Anakin very well. You got to have Luke talk to Rex about his father. They skip yeah. over that like they skipped over no, really Luke don't. meeting Ahsoka. Yeah. Luke met Ahsoka off screen and they didn't. You know, it's like yeah, you, yeah. You, my dad. So yeah, because remember this is 1982, 1983 because movie filmed in 82, released in 83, and that bearded white bearded dude has been there forever long before george created the clones and let dave filoni create rex so no it's a headcanon retcon by retards it's not a real thing just like skinny gamorian guards or anything just like hera being at hoth is not everything just like hera being the perfect foil for thrawn in the upcoming mm -hmm. movies is a thing no it's not real it's not real, but we're going to get into that in a bit, too. we got more to talk yeah. about that, so let's get well, let's it. I 100% I, I yeah. predict, because this is so close to Return of the Jedi, they will have to interconnect their storylines to a degree and make her responsible for some things that happen in Return of the Jedi, whether or not mm. that's helping Lando get his cover, getting Art 2's oh, uh, man. lightsaber Wap setup. Dude, you just totally... Poisoning Jabba to help Princess Leia. You just totally introduced something to me across your mind. I... Will not be surprised if she does a mission with Lando. That's not out of the mm -hmm. range of possibility. I'm wondering if she's going to run into to Leia and, you know. Um, I, well, I don't know if they can do that because. She, well, maybe she helps Leia create her bounty hunter persona that she uses to yeah. turn and chew Yeah, as opposed to the actual thing where um, they just well, got. The, the, the reason the Empire I, explains that. Shadow of the Empire. The, the reason I asked that is because Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia is way too attractive. They have to. They they would have to frump her up. She's <laughs> seriously. She her her and Natalie Portman both in in these franchises are way too attractive. Like you know, yeah. if Disney could frump them up, they're gonna find a way. Or is, there's gonna be some way. Like maybe she messed with uh, Boba Fett's jetpack, and that's why it's malfunctioned. She's going yeah. to. She's going to interact with at least a couple of things. You should interact with Jabba the Hutt right now. All right, let's keep going. Okay, we're skipping that part. For about let's just, here's a good shot of it. Need, she's going to say, I need a good ship. That is one of the worst ship designs I've ever seen. It's That's a just box. a box. Yeah. It's a box. Yeah, it's, it's really stupid looking. It's, it, it, there's nothing iconic and the fact that they're letting you put skins on it to change its color or this and that, that just shows you there's no chance for it to be something iconic. 
Yeah, it has no personality to it. None. It's just, Excellent yeah. word. It, it's no not like it's customizable. It's not like Starfield where you can make your own ship using all these thousands of components and it can be whatever you want. This is just, yeah. this is what you got. You want it a little blue? Yeah, it's retarded. And of course, not as long as I can remember, it's just been me and Nix doing what we have to to survive. Yeah, got to have the cute little thing. How about that uppercut, man? That's a wind up and a punch in her and her stupid little uh, Lilo and Stitch wannabe thing. That, that, that's that's the meme that that's, I'm here going around. Yeah, Lilo. Yeah, Stitch. Mm -hmm. It looks like Stitch. And it's why do we need a fluffy companion? Do you they don't. think do they think they're going to capture Baby Yoda Grogu in a light lightning oh, bottle? They're over going here? to try. Every single Star Wars property has to at least try at that because the Baby Yoda success was unparalleled. It mm -hmm. was it was a lightning in a bottle. I it was. I love thinking about that. Baby Yoda wasn't even their first try at it. They tried Baby yeah. Jabba the Hutt first. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Jabba the Hutt's kid. Yeah, that was yeah in, in the in the Clone Wars movie. Yeah. Yep, I remember that. that. Movie's so yeah. bad. 2008. Yep, it's bad. This job is my one shot at freedom. Freedom. She keeps that's, saying that, but what does it mean? That's her. But Jed, that's her story. She just wants her freedom. But who who's enslaved her? Who's captured yeah, her? Who's, well, what, you know. And what part of the patriarchy has her enslaved? <laughs> you, Jed, you bring up an excellent point. As we're watching, we are one minute and thirty eight seconds into this two minute, essentially thirty seconds. The last fifteen seconds is, is promotional stuff. It's supposed to be the story trailer about Kay Vess. We still know nothing about her story from this trailer. All she wants is freedom. Why does she want her freedom? What has happened in her life that she needs her freedom? Nothing. Is it All freedom from a freedom. debt? Maybe she's like Han and has a massive I don't know. debt. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 when I did my reaction video, I kept intersplicing Braveheart going, freedom, every two seconds. <laughs> because that's all it is. Freedom. That's all she wants. It's, it's, it's pointless. There's no depth to this. That's my... That's what I'm saying here. It's no substance. Freedom is her story. Well, this is a story trailer. You're supposed to get us involved, and you have failed to impart what her story is. Oh, she's going to join the Rebels at the end. Uh -huh. I'm sure. But if we're going to pull this off, we need the... Okay, so here's her crew. Uh, the, 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 the assassin droid that all the weirdos want to F. Yes, it is weird. It, what? What? I you don't. It's oh, a thing. Th it's mm -hmm. a thing. It's a big thing. All the internet weirdos want to f this robot. I wish Elon Musk would hurry because I want to move to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was. It's 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 so weird. It is. Yes, so it odd. is. It, it, I didn't know that was a thing. On a droid, and everybody's going. Oh my god! I want him to f me. Both straight and gay. Mm -hmm. Want him to f them. Was that kind this. of a thing a little bit too? It started with Solo because they're like, yeah. oh, oh um, well, yeah. That's Lando had Wars. sex with, <laughs> yeah, the, sex with the uh, with with the uh, feminazi one thousand, mm -hmm. yeah, Leet. Who's, he's Leet. Who's the uh, the control computer for the Falcon now? No, 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 not a thing. Voiced by thing. Phoebe Waller Bridge. No, the the the. the Millennium Falcon is controlled by three droid brains that never get along. Not the Feminazi 1000 that is <laughs> that that died for robot freedom in Solo. Give me a break. My, my question right. about this droid is why does he need to wear a coat? Droids That's don't usually wear clothes. To make him effable, Jed. I, that must be it. To make him look sexy. All right. I always forget I the name know. of the species. I always forget his name. We just call him like the rodents generally uh one of these crew. we're gonna get a rhodian scientist i guess for your crew and we need women in stem and that's and that's a female rhodian mm -hmm. because you can tell by the by by the poof of hair that's a female rhodian and the right ship the right ship the box ship oh look forced comedy guys don't you like forced comedy isn't that funny the adjustable seat joke has never been funny I'm gonna be honest, it's never been funny. No, no. Yes. Hang on. 
You said it a minute ago. I'm going to say it again. It looks like a flying pizza box. It's, I've been saying this for a, over a year now. It looks like a box. It's a box. It's the galactic version of Domino's. She's like, oh, got your pizza? This is, this is Star Wars, which in the past several decades has spawned some of the most iconic ships in science fiction history from the Millennium Falcon to X-Wings, TIE Fighters, Star Destroyers. It, they, the true geniuses, the master craftsmen at Lucas made great ships. Yeah. Ubisoft, hold my beer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to give you a box. <laughs> you a paint job, too. <laughs> Dragon Lady's gone. She's gone. She's gone. Is the comment? <laughs> Blind binoculars. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, this is. I hire you because you are one of the best hunters in the outer. Rim. She's one of the best hunters in the outer rim, and I, I, I missed this in my take. Others pointed out, so we're going to point it out now. Watch this. Best bounty hunter in the outer rim. Rim. Yeah. Uh, effable Tries droid. Just punch owned a you. Drawer. Effable She's droid. Just, to... Yeah. <laughs> Did, didn't we learn anything from Obi-Wan? Don't punch a droid. <laughs> or try to kick him with your shin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, nope. She's going to try and punch him, and he owns her in her second. So, therefore, you're not that great. Maybe maybe you should go back to Bounty Hunter School. And it's not necessarily a matter of force. It's a matter of intelligence. Like, that is yeah. a moronic thing to do, which means you can't be the best Bounty Hunter if you're moronic. Yeah. And she's holding a blaster. Look. Just shoot him. She's holding... Her blaster. Let's see if we can get a good shot of it before she tries. Uh, it's gonna be okay because the droid's gonna be non-binary, so a non-binary person can't holding hold her blaster. Just shoot it. Also, at the no. same time, it's so nonsensical that droid would have just smashed her hand right there, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. just crushed. I mean, we, now we, of course, do not know the story elements here. Maybe she can't shoot it for a reason, but maybe shoot it in the leg. Maybe you know? don't punch a droid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what options you have. Like, there's a door right there. Maybe try to shut the door on him. Or yeah. I would, I'd be fine if she tried to pick up a chair and hit him with a chair. Yes. But what you're trying, yeah. why you're, you're trying why to do? Why do they always? Why do they always have to punch the droid? Seriously, that's gonna hurt you more than it's gonna hurt them. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and if she's such a great bounty hunter, she might have had an ion setting on the pistol, which would be effective against a droid. You don't have to blow it up. Because it's... Yep. Ubisoft and Disney. Good job. Okay. She's more connected than you let on, Sliro. Uh, that that's a great performance, isn't it? Outstanding voice work. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited. Best is mixed up in something bigger. Look, guys, the Star Destroyer, and now here yeah. comes lame adventure music that doesn't sound anything like Star Wars. The Outer Rim is a dangerous place. <laughs> Everyone is fighting for their piece of the galaxy. But all I want is to live free. She just wants her freedom. That's her story. She just wants to From live free. What? What does that mean? From I just what? want to live free? I mean, if this had been a legitimate story trailer, we would have started with a clip of her background, where she comes from, what she's doing. We're supposed to be invested in this character, and this trailer does nothing to invest in this. It just shoves an ugly design in our face and tells us you got to like her because she's spunky and a badass. But I still don't she's get Han it. Like Solo. What, what is she? What does she want freedom from? What the Empire? This we guy that's know. chasing her? Like, we don't yeah, know. like the trailer doesn't tell us freedom from what exactly? If it honestly, money, so I'm guessing what? probably debts. But then debts are her own fault. So why should we sympathize with that? I also think it's foreshadowing too for her to join the the rebellion. I really oh, do. It's likely. Oh yeah, it's likely. I, I'm not yeah, sure I think that's surprised. horrible foreshadowing for that. Yeah, because uh, apparently in the game you can ch everything will change about how you do this and that. Their claim is going to be uh, consequences, choices, and consequences. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. And they might pull it off, but as Jed said, it's probably just going to be one long, boring, drawn out, moving about from one map to another, and 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 quests. They're going to all really kind of feel the same in the end. 
It's going to be a bunch of pointless collectibles. That is mm. going to be the most interesting thing in it. That's what uh, Mirage was. Mirage was a smaller map, and there was nothing to do with it in it but collectibles. Mm -hmm. Boring as shit. And, and, and your, your your faction reputations will matter, and this and that by jobs you do. Yeah, I'd be interested in that if I knew what her goddamn story was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what her story. Why is. should I care about her? Why? Perfect question. Why should I care about her? You because haven't done a single thing here to make me care about her. It's more Pretending freedom, she's... guys. It's freedom. It's freedom fighter. Freedom. All right, let's finish it up. Oh God damn it! There we go. Wrong screen. Okay. Well, I'm gonna risk it all. I'm gonna risk it all. The actress might be good looking, but she doesn't seem like oh, a her good delivery. Actress. Well, no, we're we're talk, We're not. Yeah, her delivery is about it's, as good as everybody else in this. It's shit. It's pretty bad. But she, but she's hot. We'll get to that in a second. It's very flat. Hold on, Dick. <laughs> the she's gonna fall into the starlight. She's going to explain how Boba Fett She's died. She's sliding into the Sarlacc with nothing to hold on to and just her furry little fuck. <laughs> no, no. At the end, right before she falls in, she's going to jump and she's going to catapult to the other side and cling on. Yeah. This is... This is just stupid. It's just, but you like don't want to see this... inside a Sarlacc pit? There's going to be like tunnels and you're going to go around I've seen diagrams of the Sarlacc, Okay. It's just this thing. It's there. This it's reminds me of Tomb Raider. The new ones when you're sliding down the hill and you got to mm -hmm. jump before you get skewered. Mm -hmm. This is it, no, this is this is a cut scene. This isn't even a, a, a quick time event. She's sliding in there. This is stupid. This is stupid. What is she going to do? A great flip to grab onto this cable there? I don't probably. She's got her little grappling hook thing. So maybe. Yeah, I would have used it, it before this point if I had it, but and I'm gonna bring it up. Everybody else brought it up. I didn't bring it up in my take because I was just more focused on the retardation of it. Why are we back on Tatooine? It's the only planet. Because that because there's sand and it gets everywhere. It's even I, in the damn video games, they don't, yeah. they don't have enough well, money for new Ubisoft. sets. Ubisoft they're, is obsessed with sand cultures, so yeah, it helps you're them. right about that. But the only reason they're on Tatooine this time is that she can interact with with Jabba, and we could see mm -hmm. Hanukkah. Right? It's, it's, it's all about member berries, and Disney is yeah. bleeding Tatooine dry. Yeah. Well, like because I got I got to be honest, stupid. Tatooine was never really that interesting in the first place. That's the whole point. Bar it's not supposed place, to be. It's as Luke says. If you're looking for the brightest part of the galaxy, this is the farthest point from it. Yes. It's supposed to be boring, uninteresting, somewhere the Empire isn't likely to find Luke, and it's you know uh, is what drives him to a life of adventure. And we're sub and it's supposed to be out of the way and yeah. not paid attention to because that's why Jabba centers his criminal empire mm -hmm. there because nobody goes there to be bothered. Yeah. But I don't want to be a moisture farmer. There. He says. Yeah. 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 All right. Here we go. Oh, ATSD. ATSD, ATSD, ATSD. Fuck off. Okay, so there's the story trailer. What did we learn? <laughs> real, real, real quick, did we did we hop to Dune after this? Like the Dan there? Is that what we're doing? With the sand they, now? That, that, I think that's their version of a crate dragon. Mm -hmm. Oh my yep. god, please say no. Yeah, that's that they brought. Well, that's that what we saw in what Mando, Mando season two. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, no, that's the redesign of a crate dragon. It's, it's supposed to make sucks. you think of Dune because Dune's popular thing. Let's make people think popular no, thing. Great crate dragons walk on four legs. They're yes. pretty huge, and they live in caves. They don't live in. They're not yes. underground. They're not worms. And, and kind of like actual dragons, they steal shit that's valuable. Yeah, yeah, that's one. And and you shouldn't. Even try to take one head on. Uh, original Kotor, you beat it by setting up explosives underneath it and yeah. blowing it to hell. That's yeah, you, you have to set. It. Yep. Yeah. You don't fight it. You well, and you it. see there uh, the Kessel Runner bonus bag. It looks that those aren't designs people should spend money on. No, and there's a lot of them. And so get three day early access. Now I had a tweet to show this off, but apparently the count got suspended. That I had a tweet to show off this, so uh -oh. I'm not trouble getting. So I have a backup one. It's not as good, 
But now we get it. So we've seen the so-called story of all of this now. Okay. I can tell you right now, I'm very excited not to play that crap. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've seen all that stuff. And let me see if I can get it here. Uh, Where's the image? Here we go. Uh, This is the best one I could find because I'm terrible. Oh, God damn it. Wrong fucking buttons. Uh, I'm terrible at Twitter surfing. I'm not very good at it. uh, Two years in, I'm still not very good at it. But Ubisoft, Jed, you can talk to this. Ubisoft has three different levels. you got the base game at 70 bucks. Then you've got 70? The, 70, no. 70. Then you've got the deluxe edition at 100. And then you've got mm-hmm. this one, the ultimate edition, $130. And so none of that is worth anything. It's all cosmetics and early access that you're getting. You get bundle and a season pass, which screams gated content. Yeah. Like, do you remember when you actually would go into like GameStop and you'd buy like an actual special edition? And you get shit that was actually special. Like, I was never, I, I never spent the money on special edition. I, I never did either. But like, when you, you know, when like, um, I, I bought it at, after the fact. So like, I, I have um a, a T sixty helmet. Like mm-hmm. on the ones that um, you know that they they thought they had like mold or something like that. Um, yeah. and then it turned out they didn't. Yeah, you know, I, I but the, that was something that like came up with like Fallout seventy six, and I think Fallout four. Like when you get like a special edition, yeah. you get this helmet with it in the game, and you get now, like special I, crap, right? You can understand statues sometimes for, yeah, for yeah. statue collectors or cool little trinkets for nerd shit. But you get the game, you get your season pass, you get the Savic Shark bundle, which means she's going to have a different jacket and a different and different um, cosmetic skins. For the speeder and her box ship, you get the rogue infantry battle. Same thing. You get a digital art book. Isn't that just what you want? A digital art book. You can't display a digital art book. No, I'd about to say I'd rather have a physical art book. But you know, it's just get some little and old then, school. And then three day early access with pre order. With pre order, three so, days isn't that much. It's so not there, like a Hogwarts week. Legacy. Maybe. So Hogwarts Legacy was a lot. Yeah, that yeah, that got you a big jump for if mm-hmm. you're a content creator for getting that shit out there. And I, I did it. I was up at midnight when that shit came. What was out. that? Week early? It was something it was like crazy. A, it was like four or five days, something big. Oh, was that it? I thought it was it bigger was, than that. It, it was like three or four days because I mm-hmm. I started playing on like a Tuesday and it went live for everybody on a Friday, something like that. Mm-hmm. Or or even Friday. kind of like what like again, and we're not we're not we're, we're not too Fallout yet, but Fallout seventy six did the beta testing. Most of it was closed, but there were special times where if you were a streamer, you had this window section that you were allowed to stream. Everybody mm-hmm. could watch, get excited, see what looked good, what didn't. But you know that was months before the fucking game dropped. This is really three days. This Who movie cares? comes out in a month. This game comes out in a month. It comes out in a month or two. Really? I think I think it's either next month or August. I don't remember. I think it said at the end of the trailer. Do I saw the trailer? Let me go look real quick. I got to be honest. By the end of the trailer, my my Um, brain was numb. No, August 30th. Sorry, August 30th. We are three months away from this game. Well, happy birthday to me. (laughs) But they want to give you, they make you, if there's, who is dumb enough to spend an extra $60 for this shit? There are people. I mean, I have to be honest. I I might, I'd probably buy the game if it was like 90% off. Yeah, just for yeah, some I don't even know. If I would do and that. one day it will be on May the fourth. <laughs> it will be next year, May the fourth. We're gonna come back. We will see how much has been discounted on May the fourth because that's the only thing May the fourth is good for: video game discounts. That's it. So I look for this. So that's this, and that just shows the complete disconnect by Ubisoft. Seventy dollars for this piece of shit. A hundred dollars for whatever the pre- they they had a whole pick. I guess I don't have it. And then the ultimate edition. This is ridiculous, ridiculous. Well, their pricing has been out of control for a while. Yeah. With uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, that is a fifteen-hour game, and it's the same price as Valhalla, which was yeah. a mm-hmm. on average sixty-hour game. Now like, I spent seventy dollars on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, two months ago. Over one hundred sixty hours I put into that game. So you've definitely made your money back. Oh, like, you know, yeah. you've gotten. But yeah. to me, like what you said, season pass tells me if you don't get the season pass, microtransactions to get additional content. Content. To get additional, content. Yes. Actual 
gated content that was like, oh, well, your your buddy's playing it, but like, oh, you're like, I didn't know there was that level. One it's of like, the, oh, yeah, one of the best comments I saw. Pass. One of the best comments I saw on this was somebody saying, great, just what I want in a single-player game to be running around and stumble on a quest that says, sorry, you don't have access to this quest because yeah. you didn't pay the microtransaction. That's also, that, that's still to this day one of my biggest gripes about Fallout 76 is that um, after buying the game, if you play it on PlayStation, you still have to pay for PlayStation Plus. That's the, why the, I didn't do Helldivers. Yeah, you still have to pay for it. And and it's like, so it's an additional charge on top. So Sony gets their money too. Yeah. That's which is the, the, still I, horseshit. I, I, I hate PlayStation. I, look, I'm a PlayStation guy. Obviously, I'm a PlayStation Me too. Guy, Me too. I, I hate PS Plus. I hate it with a passion. I yep. did it once for Monster Hunter World because I was playing with a friend. And I haven't done it since. And that's one of the reasons I didn't do Helldivers. That's the reason I haven't gotten involved in that. Because if I'm going to play it, I have to play it on PlayStation 5 because that's where it's going to run its best for me. I'm not yeah. playing. I'm not paying for for PlayStation Plus. It is not. It's yeah. not. Oh, it's there's no rationalization for me to work that into my budget. And I'm on a budget. Yeah. I can't just shell that shit out. So yeah, no. I, I I will admit again. It is kind of cool that and a lot of people don't know this. Um, so obviously I moved from Florida. Some of my stuff is still in storage. I do not have my PlayStation Four. I can download the 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 PlayStation Plus app and I can actually play the games I have. Off of that, off of my computer. That is kind of cool. Um, that's so, the thing, I guess. Yeah, that, I, I yeah, it is. That. So it's it's similar but to kind of like a, a Game it, Pass. But I hate Xbox. it where it's a game like Helldivers and some things like that are only accessible when you're in the online thing. Because that's Helldivers only works if you're connected to the internet. It's yeah, like you can't just play it offline. And I hate and, that and, kind of shit. And you do you do get access to other games, right? You know, so like um, I could, you get free I games play. with plus. You get yeah, you get free that. games, yeah. So yeah. it's it's no different than than uh, than than Xbox but Game Pass. I'm just I, like, so tired of the subscriptions. Yeah, of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's too much. It's too much. It is too much. I mean, if we want to be able, especially if something is cross platform, you want to play with your friends. And for somebody like me, who for certain games right now, my PS5 is a more powerful engine than my yeah. than my than my than my my PC. I want to play with people, but you're gatekeeping me from doing that. But if I'm on PC, then there's no gatekeep. It, it it's a disconnect that I think needs to be rectified in the coming years by mm -hmm. the by the gaming industry. But we're tangenting. Let's get back. So this is ridiculous. This is dumb. Uh, I I I hope that in the coming months, because it takes a few months after August, maybe by the end of the year, somebody's able to get some numbers. Who spent hundred thirty dollars on this? I don't know if we'll ever get numbers like that. We normally don't now, sales records. Yeah, it's it's hard to track the digital well, stuff like that. Um, yeah. it, it was a lot easier to track stuff like if you'd go into a GameStop. Me about going, oh, look at all the you know the, the premium, premium, the ultimate editions. Let me ask you this: I asked Dre this last weekend, and uh, he said it's going to crap. And Jed, I asked you too, but Ryan, you're here. I said last weekend. I'm going to say this again. I think it has an initial pop of sales when it comes out. An initial pop. From the I weirdos, this, I think this thing tanks massively within a month. Oh, it's it's going to be like every other Disney property that um, under the sun. It's going to have a massive. It's going to have a massive weekend. They're going to brag about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was the number one downloaded thing on Steam or whatever the fuck they like to say. And because all the weirdos who want to hump the droid, whatever that is, uh, and then the next weekend nobody cares. Like, nobody I, cares because I don't. I don't think this game has lasting power because it's not Star Wars. It's to me. It's it's what I criticize Andor for. It's something that if you take out all the Star Wars elements, still works as rando science fiction setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what it is. But we got this. So this is the sales. I think are going to be shit in the end. I don't think it sells more than. I don't think it gets double digit sales. I don't think it. I don't think it gets over ten million. No, I, I don't and see it. it. I mean, they're still going to manipulate it and act like it's a success. They did the same oh, thing yeah. with Mirage at Ubisoft. That one only sold five million copies, and they uh, used one small demographic. It sold in the UK better than Valhalla, and they used that one as their. They're headline. doing that a lot lately with that shit. They'll take mm -hmm. one weird thing and try and spin mm -hmm. it crazy. So it's yep. going to fail like this. But here's the other conversation is so it happens. Here's this is a good shot of this is what the cover is going to look like of the game. This is part of the current cover art. K hey, Vess. We, we we've been talking about it, we've been touching on it. The character design, and we said it last year. It's not the we're not buying the false narrative that the stands are pushing. We talked about it last year when we first saw it. She's ugly. 
It's a dude. She looks like a dude. She has no body parts, no ass, no tits. That is a face that got beat by the ugly stick on the ugly tree falling down the ugly tree. And it's in the face of, and I talked about this on Wednesday, in the face of playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, where you have Tifa and Aerith who have immaculate designs, in the face of Eve with Stellar Blade coming out, in the face of all these other games coming out of Japan and Korea where they are just thrusting, and I mean thrusting, the boobs and the butt and the beautiful faces in you, at you, however you want to take that. Yeah. And they're doing that. They're doing that for Western gaming to continue to push uggification. It, it, it it's not, it, it, it boggles my mind, especially when that's a, that's a pretty girl. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty girl who I would invite out for a night on the town and into my bedroom without. Question. Also, she's very, very diverse. I'm surprised they didn't go with this look. And she has a body. She has a body too. This chick has a mm -hmm. body. I've seen her body. This is an attractive woman. Yeah, the, the game character does not look diverse like this woman is. I don't know no. what that's supposed to be, but I yeah, it's very race ambiguous. Yeah. And uh I'm I'm gonna use this word and that's the point. <laughs> ambiguous and then uh drinker. I saw I only saw this because of drinker. Once you see it, you can't unsee <laughs> oh, I it. I did too. I saw that, yeah. <laughs> It's the, ugly. I mean, you got to push the non-binary narrative. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody's yeah, ambiguous. Mm -hmm. yeah. But here's the, here's the, no, no, face point, face point, go ahead. Oh, uh, just real quick. The, the big thing with all this, the big defense I've seen from stands and studios and whatnot mm -hmm. for uglification is, oh, you guys are just used to these unrealistic standards for women, these impossible standards like Disney princesses, like Stella Blade. Those are impossible. We're trying to give you will, real women, whereas uh, we can completely oh. discount that oh. evidence because of, you know, that picture you just showed of the actress and Stellar Blade used female Shin, models. Shin Jae-un, the Korean That's model, the body model, woman. not the face, but her body. Her mm -hmm. body is outrageous. That's a real woman's body. Same I mean, thing with the Disney princesses. They were designed after real women. I, I, I would use Dermy as a human shield wading through an army to get to her body. <laughs> uh, that that, I, I, that I, I, I would sacrifice Dermy in a heartbeat to get there. Uh, hell, I'd sacrifice you guys too. Whatever. I, but, I'd sacrifice Dermy to for this chick. Like, I, Dermy just is <laughs> not worth enough. But here's the thing: they do this on purpose. But then we get the stands. Let me see. Do I have these in the right part? What, let me see. What's this one? Hang on a second. Um, what's this one? Oh, okay. That's security. We'll come back. That's security thing. So you get guys like this guy. You may notice him in the past. Some of you who watch me cover the stands. This guy in particular, he's a piece of shit. If you think K-Vess is ugly, you are delusional. This guy is a retard. K-Vess is beautiful. Stay mad haters. These Dude, people are horrible shills. Tell me you've never kissed a girl without telling me you've never kissed a girl. Hold on. Can, can you go back just to that last one real quick? Yeah. Dude, she looks like she's on a fucking meth bender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that Look looks like a dude on meth. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, um... It's He's ridiculous. like just coming down, guys. That's a little itchy yeah. right now. Like, what are you? What are you doing? You this look is horrible. They, they, they are obsessed with this, and it brings me to the next point. When we're commenting on this, we're commenting on the character is ugly, mm -hmm. and these people, yeah, these people, come out of the woodworks to defend her and defend the corporation. And call us, and here's the weird thing, and I put this to you guys. It is so weird that their attack narrative is, you guys need to stop being obsessed with porn. I'm about to say, I gotta be honest. And they're the really ones pushing, yeah, they're the ones pushing uh, sex work is real work or whatever. They're the mm -hmm. ones pushing yeah. it's empowering. And it, they're the ones who want to get effed by the droid. Yes. <laughs> They're the ones. We, all we said is, "This is an ugly chick. Why can't we have?" No, not that. Why can't we have this? Yeah, just let the actress be the actress. If it's based yeah. off the character's yet, look, let it be based off the character's look. Yet Deborah Wilson, you know the the bug eyed black chick who used to be on Living Color and now does voice acting work. She gets a 
minute to minute detail representation of her face in every goddamn game she's in, including the Jedi Fallen Order series. She, they can, they can accurately represent her, but they can't put her face. They can actually get Cameron Monaghan on here for as, as the star of the other games there too, but they can't do this. It screams they are pushing the shit. Let me go. I want to bring this down because I want to. I gotta bring something up, and I don't want to. Uh, bring up a wrong screen here, but they put this shit up, and as you said, it's this weird thing where they're obsessed with telling us stop thinking about porn. No, okay. One, first of all, when I look at Eve, I'm not thinking about porn. I'm just thinking about tits and ass. It's not necessarily <laughs> porn, but uh, you get this. Where is it? Um, I swear well, to God. Well, I mean, I it's it. It, yeah. it's also happening a little bit, and, and I'm not trying to jump forward. It's also happening on on the person who modded um uh, Ella Purnell's butt on mm -hmm. the poster. Like, yeah. you know, the people like, going, that, oh, yeah, that, is that, that her real? Is that porn? Her, like, is that her, her real butt on that? Is that her real butt? Well, I don't. Somebody photoshopped um, one. They, to make they it, changed like, more... it in the in the Fallout poster. I know. And yeah, uh, listen, but yeah, well, I, I don't know if that is or not. The... But yeah, see, I, we never see her ass in the show. Yeah, it's a yeah. fake ass that they, she did for okay. that photo. But the big thing is, like you were saying, everyone was commenting, like you, you've been too obsessed with porn. Oh, you need to get a girlfriend. And like, oh men, I hate men. And it's a woman who did that Photoshop. Yeah. Now here's yeah. the thing. No, they talk about porn, and then I found this today. The list of Uggified characters. There's KVS. Here's Aloy. M Mumps Aloy. Aloy wasn't a looker in the first place, but she was one of she's like one of the patient zeros of mm -hmm. a model who was drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And they made this. Yeah, and, and, and obviously that's from, from the second game because second game. There, there is a difference between the first and second game. Oh, big difference. difference. The, the, yeah, the first game, challenges. yeah, the first game, not the best, but not. The she, second she's attractive game. and it, it's Enough, it makes sense in a way yeah. but still the other the the face model was gorgeous but they mm -hmm. did this so they got this uh the forespoken chick was ugly i don't know what this is from if anybody yeah, can tell that. me what this is i don't know what that's from it's still not pretty uh but this guy's saying these are ugly women according to twitter y'all need to stop watching porn it's messing with your heads but he keeps going he dares to bring up spider-man to mj yeah, that's so bad. Not ugly. I, I get the control one, the the second wim, uh, woman on this one. Um, that's a bad shot. Of her. She's actually okay. gorgeous in control. Control is actually. Okay, a I don't game. know. Okay, okay. So that one, he, I'll give him that one. But oh, look, Abby Smash. The, the, <laughs> what sucks though, season two is actually casting an attractive actress. For I know. This, so I hope I've they don't do that. anything terrible for her. Hey, well, isn't hey. isn't isn't she supposed to be like young Abby or something? Isn't that what I it is? Know. I don't know. She's old enough to play the real Abby. Is she? Well, she's not the big actress, enough. Well, from, um, yeah, she's not big enough. But from uh, she, last she better Sandy. get on that juice. Uh, but so we got this, and then of course, uh, this. Shit. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> That's from an early PS5 game. Uh, is it? But, but where you? Uh, I forget what the game is called. Where you can rewind time or some shit like that. Uh, it's somewhere again. But you look at the, th these guys think that this is be oh my god no 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 but they say we're obsessed with porn no we just like beauty men and women like yes. beauty mm -hmm. it's nothing no, no ahead, woman ever ahead. had a pro no woman ever had a problem seeing another attractive woman on a video game no no also also we at the it. same time women will admit this they don't mind boobs in movies women are nice boobs no, I don't mind. So this whole thing is this weird manufactured push to make beauty a crime. Trying to, it's they're trying to change the definition of beauty that we have to accept this that this is beautiful. I I know, and you don't have to accept what these people say either because they're fake. They're not real. These are fake gamers. A lot of them are are, are fake. They do this for interactions. They do it to get these interactions. This guy right here, he does this shit to get interactions. He's not doing this because he cares. Well, damn, this man, I need to start doing it because I want to get monetized on Twitter. Shit. <laughs> I'm switching yeah, I, sides, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> these people are hollow. 
they don't really care about this. They care about it because it's part of the agenda push. It's about their ideology. These are the same people, and not this one in particular or this guy, but these same people who push for pronouns in bio. They push for uh, certain flags in your bio, all that kind of shit. They'll say certain things about certain people in the world, and they want to claim that they're the victims and that we, the real fans, are the ones who are the problem here. Mm -hmm. No, the, the problem is you're pushing a fake false narrative that doesn't work. And uh, I, I'm going to say, believe your lying eyes. This is ugly. And you shouldn't be ashamed to say it. As, as, far as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I think they should start. I think the actresses that are playing, or the models that are playing and voicing these characters should start suing the companies um, for mm -hmm. making them Probably look something ugly. in their contract. That keeps oh, them from being able to say anything. Guaranteed. Basically, so once you become a, a model um, for a character, you you sign your your likeness away. Well, um, Harrison Ford, something... Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, they signed their likenesses away for Han, Luke, and Leia in yep. the '80s. That's why for years on all the covers, it's just the them because that oh, Lucasfilm owned the likenesses of them as those characters. Mm -hmm. Well, and here, here's a great, great way to look at it. So I, I spent obviously time with WWE uh, and you know, when, when you sign a contract with WWE, they own your, your likeness mm -hmm. and which means you cannot change your hairstyle without their permission. Mm -hmm. You cannot go and get a different haircut than you normally get because of your portrayed persona. So yeah, no, they the, these people own none of their likeness. Yeah, once they sign the contract, they're probably locked in, and it's a shame because we've seen it from the Mary Jane to this the chick playing Humberly Gonzalez, who plays uh, K Vess, to many others. These are attractive, beautiful women who should not you can't have, have that. You can't have, can't that, have no. that. And it's part of the agenda all the way through this. It's completely part of the agenda. They want you. To do what they say. They want to control how you think and feel about everything. And it also links to this to this section, to these people like this guy, the people like Suggs, people like all these assholes who are part of the positivity movement. The, I mean, Ryan, I haven't had you on for this conversation. How do you feel about the positivity movement? From all these people who are trying to say, oh, this is a place for positivity, not toxicity, toxicity to get away uh, from all well, the negativity. Well, I mean... Um... My favorite positivity uh, movement is the body positivity one. So uh, <laughs> it's it's literally um it's so positive that pe people are dying in their forties. So mm, yeah. I mean, but, con congratulations, uh, population yeah. control. Like but, I don't. But we're, we're we're not allowed to talk about anything negative. We can't have a fight. Yeah, no, you're not. Debate. And that's why I've been saying for the past several weeks now, positivity is a lie, and the people pushing it are trying to create a space where they can control what mm -hmm. you think and what is deemed correct by their discourse and if you yep. don't do it then you're toxic they're and also they're also the ones who are the most miserable right because mm -hmm. misery loves company so as soon as yeah. you say something that critiques something that they don't agree with they're the first ones to basically just go nuts and i mean and when i say nuts they call mm -hmm. you all these I mean, names like they're yeah. the first ones to insult you and you're like you're like bro like going but I, I just, just made a comment about I, but like I didn't interact. It's not like I went under your comment and I'm like, oh well, you're wrong and you're this and you're that. And it's like, no, it's like I made a simple comment and then the people underneath the one comment, the neutral comment of this looks bad or whatever you said, what are you a Nazi or you racist or sexist or blah. It's just like, well, you say that here now. Now like I'm not here. just an example of that because I actively troll these people, so I do, but I do it on social. I do it on next Twitter, which which is what that's for. Going out there and trolling people, being a shitster. That's my whole persona on Twitter. But these people who push the positivity thing, they're the weirdos. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who have tried to change the fan base to what they want to push us out. And you get people like this, still, still with the ugly concept, guys like this. Uh, read Star Wars, Victor. Look at the profiles at the people complaining about her looks in the response of, to my tweet, their feeds are either one, super political, two, empty, or three, typical fandom menace nonsense. The outrage for this is not organic, and a specific type of person who is complaining, first of all, pronouns, thank you. You're mm -hmm. the one who is the 
political one here. Secondly, you are a fake fan. The moment you say legends, I know exactly who you are. And secondly, you reveal yourself as the not organic when you say fandom menace. Fandom menace hasn't been a thing for four years. And it's never even, really a thing. Yeah, I'd probably even argue call. it stopped it being a, a thing in 2019. Yeah, and so once Rise of Skywalker ended, and then the people who were trying to use it as a banner ate themselves or cling to it, and 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 really that's when more solid foundations of of fans started to co uh, co consolidate into we're all here, we all see each other, let's create our our buttress, our our pushback against what's going on. Phantom Menace vanished. Mm -hmm. it, it it hasn't been a thing for years. This, this is why, and I replied, you're the one who's not organic. If you're saying Phantom Menace is a thing, it shows you're fake. You're completely fake. But then there's also this, and, and there's a cyclical thing. I mentioned it last week. There's a cyclical thing when it comes to these Disney stands where they want to try and push the same things. Right now, it's the, I'm seeing a lot of Ray is great again. Also because Daisy Ridley is about to have a movie come out in less than a month. It's going to lose a lot of money. Oh, really? I didn't even know she had one coming out. Yeah, it's about uh, a historical documentary of the chick who swam the English Channel. Wow, I'm yeah. fascinated. Yeah, I mean, by Disney and made by Disney. So, oh, it's made by. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, probably make no money. But then there's this one. Uh, when you when when are you old EU cultists going to realize nobody took your freaking books away from you? It's all fiction. None of that was ever going to be live under action under George either. My God, it's become pathetic that this is all you bitch and moan about. They call us the cultists. As an EU guy who was there from the beginning, uh, we never tried to convince anybody to read the books. We just said they're good, and if they people found them, it would ha you had a good time. Uh, they're the ones who yell and scream at you if you don't join their side. And reject everything before. That sounds like the yeah, cult to me. Yeah. And it's cultist behavior. Yeah. But what is she what is he saying fiction about? It of course it's fiction. Is yeah. that some sort of own? <laughs> I mean, your You're Disney canon people. is fiction too. Yeah. Yeah. No. Live action doesn't make it non-fiction. And no. we never asked for anything else. We just wanted our books. We never asked for live action. I just and wanted not only, my books. Not only that, there's there uh the Disney EU, as it were, isn't actually selling book wise at all. I'm seeing. Oh, Disney High Star Republic. Wars doesn't sell. It doesn't I'm sell. High High Republic. I, I'm seeing High Republic um, books that have been sitting on the shelves for a year. Rotting. Or more on Rotting. In it's had a 90% drop since phase Jesus. one of the High Republic. Jesus. Uh, Dr Drunk Freepio has the numbers on this. Uh, That's wild. That shit sells less than 10,000 copies a book. <laughs> there's no money in that so that's the thing here these stands are trapped in their weirdness where they think they're on some sort of winning hand on top of the hill and they're trying to convince us that what the, what that we're all the ones that are wrong no uh you're the ones living in a fantasy world. i mean jed uh when i clipped out our our, our reaction to the empire tales of the empire trailer oh i hit a reddit because they came after me did you in that I that thing has been that by by my standards of ratioing, I've been ratioed to hell on that one. I've been ratioed to, to look hell. at those comments. They're always no. entertaining. Oh, it 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 fired up. I'm uh the I'm I'm not I'm a fake fan. Uh I just don't want to have fun. People are waiting for this. And my response is show me the people waiting for Barris Offie and Morgan Elspeth. Show me the thousands of people who need this. Oh Jesus, you do 52 comments. <laughs> For what for for a video that only got a few hundred views, uh -huh. I mean, yeah, I hit a Reddit someplace. I hit a Reddit because it was the same weirdos who kept commenting. It's, it's a type where they just keep commenting the same time over and over and over and over and over again. So yeah, that's bots. It's, <laughs> Sorry, no, no, that's no. Bots. It's Reddit weirdos. It's Reddit weirdos. Right. What it is. It's Reddit weirdos. Well, I anyway. mean, I had I had something similar when I when I called out Travis Kelsey for for shoving um Andy Reid. Saying that, um, you know, that basically saying that he assaulted him, and I mean, the weirdos came out of the woodwork. I like I remember 80 that. comments. I remember that. It yeah. went nuts. People yeah. like going, "That's not assault. This is libel. He could sue you." And I'm like, "No, it's not libel at all. It's literally there's a camera. <laughs> you can see. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you if you hit the right nerve, dude. Oof. 
right now, when it comes to Star Wars Outlaws, Western gaming, it's reality versus pretend. And mm. us, the chat, people in the fellowship, we we live in reality. And we see this issue for what it is. These people are weirdos, and they're panicking. In the end, they're panicking, mm -hmm. which is why they keep going through their cycles of trying to convince us that Disney Star Wars is a thing. Jed, you look amused as you're reading those comments still. Are you still reading those oh, comments? Yeah, yeah, there's some gold, <laughs> gold in here. Yeah, I saw, after like a day, I usually quit because I can't, I can't waste my time. Yeah. After a couple, after a couple of responses, I don't waste my time. But there we go. Outlaws, it's going to be a bust. I can't wait for it to be a bust. And we'll comment on when it's a bust and how it vanishes. And uh, Jay Fraser, 364. 10 British pounds. Hail Roundtable. Adam, I recommended you as a guest on Greasy Show Roasting Streams. Also, two friends and I have begun to outline our writing project, a comedy fantasy, a Sekai book series. Hashtag Iron Age. Hey, man, go for it. Make your shit. Do it. And thank you for suggesting uh, I know of Grizzy. If I ever get a reach out, I will let you know. Uh, that would be cool. You reach around? Reach out. I said reach out. You sick son of a bitch. Um, I didn't say so. Thank you for the 10 British pounds. Um, okay, let's get to the other main event here. Fallout, the TV series. Prior to this, uh, all of us on this panel were very critical. Very critical. We devoted videos. We devoted streams to it. We were very critical of Jonathan Nolan and his commentary because it was what we had in the moment. And my response to that is, Jonathan Nolan should have just shut up and not said a damn thing. Yep. Just let the show come out. And uh, I, I, listen, I didn't need to make those videos. They were just story of the moment of something I was going to cover. So I was trying to be ready for it. Yeah. And I and, said, and the, yeah, go ahead. The Jonathan Nolan stuff applies to so much more than just Fallout. That's why in yeah. my video, I didn't really talk about Fallout besides saying this is probably a red flag as a throwaway comment. But uh, I, I didn't focus too much on Fallout as much as the, the rest of you guys because mm -hmm. I, I just didn't care. I, mm -hmm. I've been gaining apathy for a lot of this stuff. Well, you weren't planning on reviewing it. so Yeah, I'm not yeah, planning on I reviewing was, it. I so made I one Fallout out. video and it was about Jonathan Nolan's comments because those comments can apply to nearly every other TV show and movie that we've seen the last few years. It's just this perspective from Hollywood that you should not prioritize the fans at all, that it's a fool's errand to even attempt to make something for fans. And that's just a flawed perspective. And the quality of the show doesn't change that because as i mentioned in that he's made yeah. good stuff before westworld season one is phenomenal there's only one season of westworld though just just so we're clear but yeah. if the quality of the show makes no impact on my video at least in my adams as well is saying that yeah. this is a dumb thing to say regardless of the show and there seems to be some sort of weird stigma that we're not allowed to change our minds on something that we have to own our mistake and we can only have that mistake. We can't change our opinion because I said it earlier in the stream. I've said it on several videos and I'll, I say it when I'm when later tonight, when I release my final review of the remaining fallout episodes, I was wrong. I was wrong. What I feared was agenda turned out to be nothing. Yes. There is still a they, them in this show. And mm -hmm. I think it's stupid, but and they then who's gone through, you know, chemical treatments, yeah. which yeah. I doubt are very prevalent in a post-apocalyptic society where food's yeah. hard to come by. Yeah. yeah. So there's that. And in the end, and I apologize for those of you who are going to watch the video later, there's going to be a little crossover what I say here and what I say there. In the end, it's just a regular show. It's just a regular average show that tells its story rather decently, has good characters and bad characters, has problems, has does things well. And in my final review, I treat it as such. I'm not making fun of it. I'm simply commenting on what I see and how I feel about these things. And that's the bottom line of it. I mean, I mean Ryan, you were as critical as this before we, oh, we went into this as I was. Oh, massively. And the, the reason I was so critical is I'm going to start out um, right on with the, you know, I hit it on the nose um, because they chose Ella Purnell to lead the show. Um, when And the reason I'm going to lean that direction is because, um, you know, so quite frankly, it's very current day to have women and everything have women lead everything 
Now, so that was red flag number one for me because obviously it is a thing. We see it's a thing. It's not a thing in this. Yeah. It's actually they, um and, and warning guys, there's gonna be spoilers. Warning, yeah. we are gonna do spoilers in order to have this discussion. Continue. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously the um so Fallout, the, the original Fallout game, the Vault Dweller is male. Um, Fallout two, the chosen one is male. Uh, you know. Fallout Three. Um, I mean, it just it just goes down, you know. Now, so um, the thing is, is, is the later games becomes a little more l loose, yeah. right? Which is fine. There's you no, there's nothing. Customize, yeah. Yeah. There's there's nothing wrong with having having um. Yeah. It's just female, customization. Character. Yeah, it's just customization. Um, and it, it's the story that's usually canonical. It's not usually so like this side wins, this 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 one prevails. Um, so obviously Fallout New Vegas, the uh. The the NCR winning the Battle of Hoover Dam and, and defeating Caesar's Legion is canonical. It, it is mm -hmm. it is the canonical ending. Um, you can play another side if you want to. That's fine, but it is ultimately the courier helps the NCR win the battle of uh, the second Battle of Hoover Dam. Excuse me. Uh, so anyway, that was red flag number one. Just just because current day is always about well, let's, let's put a chicken in and make her gay. Uh, lame. Well, um, so so Lucy is a little lame in a sense he's very naive she has been living in a vault mm -hmm. for 219 years they don't know any better they are stuck so fallout is is set in um it, it's set uh, this is actually the show is set in 22 uh 2291 I which think. is the farthest forward we've ever been correct yeah 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 or 2296 excuse me i think it's 2296 um so, so the the most far forward we have been was Fallout New Vegas, which was twenty two eighty one. There's a glaring timeline mistake, and and I'll get to that. So, so anyway, she they she they come out of Vault thirty three, um, and you know because she's going to find her father. Now we've seen this in Fallout three. You got to find my dad. Uh, Fallout four is like I need to find my son. Um, but uh, f even though Fallout four is canonically it's where the father and goes to find the son the wife is the one that is killed in the cryopod um yeah i played so, as a dude yeah so <laughs> i so, played as the chick yeah um so it's 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 pretty much it's a standard fallout story it's yeah it's, it's, something happens you have to go fix it and and, and and part of your red flag about worrying about lucy being put out was dispelled in the first episode where she was shown to be competent and years mm -hmm. of practice and training, which was, I, and I said in my review, which I got roasted for, people who didn't actually really probably watch my review, I was mostly positive in that first review, but I mm -hmm. got, I've been attacked. because Which I is nonsense. Every, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I was trying to watch one episode at a time and give an individual episode a reaction without being influenced by the later episodes and to watch how it progresses and my opinion. And some people just see it because it was batch dropped. And we're going to get to the batch drops conversation. Look at that. Because mm -hmm. it was batch dropped, some people cannot comprehend that I'm trying to watch it in isolation and talk about each episode in isolation. There, there seems to be a, a failure to understanding that that's how I wanted to review it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you just sit back knowing where it goes and seeing I'm probably going to change my mind, why not just sit back and see if I change my mind? Or actually watch my review. Don't say that I'm a miserable fuck. And I just want everything to be terrible. Actually, watch if you can say that I, where I, with the exception of whole of Maximus, who even after eight episodes, I think Maximus sucks. Yeah, I, I don't like Maximus. I don't and like see, I, I, um, I, there, I, I had some issues with this character. Um, I kind of felt like there was a little bit of the John Boyega thing a bit. Uh, also at the same time, I actually, I, I think, in my opinion, the good outweighs the bad. Which, but I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. We'll come back to that in a second. Let me just say, yeah. So, but in that in that first episode, I'm super positive about Lucy and her behavior. I was really happy uh, that uh, her, her and her dad had a great had a good dad relationship. I mm -hmm. really liked that that we had a good dad thing, which in a moment we're going to talk about, which was taken away from me. Not as Ryan put in our discussion with yesterday, in replaced for to make the bad dad, but it was taken away from me for story purposes. And I think they could have done it better where some where some of my criticisms come into the writing mm -hmm. and the narrative of the show, but we had a good dad. And then we had a possible bad women's, which turns out to be a good women's. And it, it, I, it like mold diver. All right, Ryan, let me ask you this. Did they mm -hmm. mention her name at all in that first episode? 
Moldiver or whatever her uh, name the, is. The, the Raider chick? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they did. They did? Okay, it, I just missed yeah, it. Yeah, it was. I just missed it. Okay. Uh, the, the, uh, the vault fell. Okay, so let, let me. The add, vault uh, fell. Okay, yeah. Let, let I me just add, missed it there. I was quick because when I watch episode two, I'm like, wait a minute. When did we get her name? I don't remember let, hearing her name. Let, let me add some context. Now, the vault set up by Vault Tech. The vast majority, it was only about, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 33% of them were meant to carry humanity into the future. The other 66% were set up as evil experiments to watch humanity destroy itself. Yeah. Or, and so as that's the why, the show, as the show puts it, they're there to be their own little personal society science projects mm -hmm. now. Yeah, pretty much. And, and it's unbeknownst to the majority of the vault dwellers. Ma yeah. Many, many of the vaults met probably the, the most horrific, tragic takes, as was shown with Vault 32. Mm -hmm. um, and so this this is very, 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 very spot on with the lore. The, the vaults are horrible, horrible, horrible places. Mm -hmm. um, they are designed to fail, the majority of them. They are designed to be a, a social experiment. So the actual vaults that survive going forward, there is still a centralized government. It is called the Enclave. And... Vault Tech was part of what the the U.S. government going forward would be, as well as um West Tech, which is which is a, another evil organization. You see them all uh, in episode eight; they are all listed. You, you, in you see all of them. the The only one, the only one that that, that stands out that it n is not being an overly o overtly evil man is Mister House from Robco. Mm. He is the one who actually saves New Vegas in in the game. You know, he saves Las Vegas and turns it into New Vegas. Now he's still not a he's still not a very moral man, but he well that isn't that the thing about Fallout? There's no real good people in Fallout. No, it's, no, in, uh, usually this is the one franchise where morally gray is the right way to go mm -hmm. because it's just that's the world at this point. Yeah, you can't be morally pure in a world mm -mm. like this. You want to survive. And and Lucy portrays that actually perfectly, right? And that's why she, she works. It's, it is why she works because she steps out of this into this this new world, and everybody from the word Jump Street looks at her and goes, "You're gonna die. You, mm. You're not gonna survive up here. Your ass is dead." Like going, "You you don't have what it takes." Like and and we see constantly her being mm. belittled and the fact that she is so naive of this this uh, morality complex that was mm. taught. And so, but the thing is, she is competent because yes, the vaults do um, to give the residents things to do. They do organize activities like um, weapons training, uh, self defense, stuff like that. Um, you know, obviously. So it, it there there were some good things that Vault Tech did, but it was so minuscule mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the majority of vaults, uh, obviously thirty one, thirty two, and thirty three, they're a trifecta. Yeah. And was all that the, a thing in the games? Because that seems dumb. It was not a thing in the in, in the games. No, the okay. the well, the, the, the show is trying to broaden the lore. That it, it looks like mm -hmm. to show that yeah, Vault Tech was more of a that... mastermind for everything. Mm -hmm. And well, okay, yeah, so the 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 thing is, is that there are overseers that are um basically their Vault Tech plants meant to manipulate the system in their favor. So that is not something that's new. Um, mm -hmm. I actually kind of I was very odd about the fact that they had three vaults all attached to where they could just. Mm -hmm. open the doors after a certain amount of time um because the the, the vaults were meant to but then there's the reveal I, in episode eight there, there's the reveal yeah. yeah and so that that is not a surprise the reveal uh the, the yeah. reveal is actually no. very very spot on for, for and, fallout and i last night uh this was uh off to the side this was not recorded we were talking about this stuff and i was saying since i was on episode eight when we finished driving last night uh i was a little put off the in there's Three arcs, four arcs in this, four plots. There's Lucy, there's Maximus, there's the ghoul, and then mm -hmm. there's all things Vault Tech, which involves Vault 33 and part of the ghoul's backstory. Cooper, Cooper Howard is Howard. I just saying. Oh, oh, he was he by far yeah. the, the most incredible character. Oh, well, yeah, that and I'm gonna get to that. So you have all that stuff. So there's four arcs. Now, my biggest problem during the show was that and Jed, if you ever finish it, you might uh, you might agree with me on I, this. I don't think I'm going to finish yeah. it. I'm just too bored with it to care well, beyond the two episodes. That's the thing. But here's the thing. Th to me, I one of my criticisms of the show. Well, I, I, let me say then, the show is okay. It's not the greatest thing in the world, 
it's a nice little watch. I recommend if you just want to have a nice little watch and and just veg out, watch it. You'll probably walk away. Okay, I had a little entertainment and I'm fine. Uh, but I didn't like certain certain sort of the narrative pacing. I feel as though uh, the Vault Tech storyline with 30, 31, 32, 33 with uh, Lucy's brother Norman discovering things. I feel like that either should have been an entire episode all its own, not spliced up the way it was, with only the big reveals coming together in the end. Same with Coop's backstory. I would have liked a single episode of just his backstory instead of it being peppered over three episodes because it broke the pacing of everything else that was going on. Even though they were trying to line it up narrative-wise of, oh, we're learning this about this, we learned that Lucy's father, Hank, is one of the vault tech people that were cryo-frozen and brought forward and this and that. At the same time that there's Betty and all this stuff, I just, I wanted, I felt it could have been streamlined better. And it, and when I was watching for that, I thought, well, maybe this could have been put in another season. Now I see they had to put it in this season because it was part of the reveal, so it had to happen. But it's just, a, there's a narrative flow that I think could have been done a little better. And and I just mentioned it, we get the big reveal that uh, Lucy's father, Hank McLean, as we learn his name right at the end, is part of the Vault 31 control, where it's a bunch of vault Tech people who have been cryo-frozen to yes. run the social experiment of 32 and 33. <clears throat> and when he was in charge and he married uh, Lucy's mom and had Lucy and Norman, Lucy's mom, Rose, took it, took the kids and ran away when she figured out the truth to sun, Sunny Shades. Sun, sh 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 Shady Sands. Shady Sands. I kept saying Shady, Shady Pines today in my review. I'm going to have to go edit that out. <laughs> yeah, Shady, Shady Sands. Pines. So. I kept saying Shady Pines. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. So she, and then he came and took her back, and then he was responsible for – the destruction of Shady Sands. And that's why I said I understand making him a villain, but I don't like the fact that they gave us a good dad who was being a good dad early on, and then they took that away from us. I don't, uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. that the, 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 re the reason I'm going to push back on this is because, again, mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very much fallout to, again, as we were talking about, there are no morally good characters. Mm -hmm. um, so Hank was never actually a morally good character. He was a he was a part of Vault Tech, which was an incredibly evil company. Um, and it, this this has been circulating for actually for years now. The thought that Vault Tech actually had something in the destruction of the Earth and having China and the United States fire their nuclear weapons. It was always a question. And this has been something that that more hardcore hardcore Fallout fans have been asking for years. Who fired first? Did the United States nuke itself to get so then then so they could actually nuke China and then China nuke back? And it's like it's it's been this ongoing thing of like I I actually kind of think that that Bethesda actually finally listened to all the chatter about that and they're like, well, we're gonna get finally give you an answer because this has been going on since the show says Vault Tech triggered everything. Yes, Vault De Vault Tech triggered everything because they were set to capitalize the most. Because again, somewhat similar to, to our, our modern WEF, they think they know a better way and they're willing to destroy everything to get there. It's so in in not to kind of pull real world politics into it, but it it is kind of somewhat based in no. that. Um, so the, the the thing is is that um, obviously even even a bad person can be a good dad, right? Because you know they say that when you have kids, it changes you. Um, Let me counter real quick. Then I mean I understand what you're saying, and the whole and we agree, no one is going to be you know pure gold, pure in this in this thing. But I would have liked a little more actual nuance that he didn't want to do it and that he didn't want to kill his wife. And when he says, as soon as she left, she wasn't your mother anymore. Is I would have liked more a little, I would have liked the struggle for him. Mm -hmm. It would have made, it would have made him a better character. Kyle McLaughlin, fantastic performance. He's Kyle McLaughlin. He knows how to do this shit. He can go from I'm good and all gush sweet. To, I'm fucking crazy. And, and it snap, snap a finger. It's great. Kyle oh yeah. McLaughlin, he's the best part of agents of shield. Early seasons. Yeah, he, I would actually. Uh, I'm. I'm not going to argue that too much. I will nudge it a little back in the direction because. Okay, so there's 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 a big moment in 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 the show. It's 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 what um, 
it's usually what a fallout is usually based off of. It's called the big hope moment. There, there is that one where Lucy, she's like dad and she, and he just, and he, he inputs the code and I'm going to get to that because there are people who, um, who I was a little upset to find out that Shady Sands was nuked. I, I was, um, mm-hmm. as somebody who is a massive, my favorite faction in, in fallout is the new California Republic. It is the, it is the one carrying the legacy of the United States the most into the future. Arguably, the second would be probably the Minutemen from Fallout Four. Mm-hmm. They believe very much in the 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 lasting of the of the the you know the the United States the the, the foundation of it. The reason the New California Republic is made more sense to be the ones is because it was suffering from some of the same bureaucratic issues that before the war or even the into in our, in our modern government today so even though the new california republic they say in the show didn't work right um there there are lasting factions of the new california republic that's and it, that's how it ultimately got made like it became the ncr then as they expanded they absorbed more people and brought more people in to be citizens and stuff like that. And they provided prof- protection again, kind of the same thing with what happened with Caesar's Legion, you know, Caesar's Legion was pushing back. It was the biggest faction resisting um, in fallout New Vegas. So that big moment, the, the reason I say that the, the fans who are again, who are probably saying, well, it destroyed everything from fallout one, fallout two and fallout New Vegas. And they're trying to retcon things. My big issue is the date 2077. They say the fall of Shady Sands. Um, that was four years before Fallout New Vegas, the second battle of Hoover Dam. I, it's a massive flaw. It's a massive fudge. Um, so, um, well, third I mean, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but uh, again, also at the same time, he, he's not a hundred debate. Yeah, yeah, he he he's not um, he's not hundred percent wrong because the the Brotherhood of Steel. In the Mojave They're Wasteland dicks. was actually You're dicks. They are dicks, but dicks. they they were also almost completely wiped out due to the NCR. And the NCR is not again infallible, um, as in most governments are not. Um, anyway, so the date twenty seventy seven doesn't work because it predates Fallout New Vegas by four years. If mm-hmm. if Shady Sands, the capital of the New California Republic, was already nuked then it, it throws a massive wrench in the lore going from there. I mean, we know Todd Howard hates the fact that people like New Vegas, so that he's been trying to get away from it for years. So there's um, several things I've heard of that he in the Fallout TV show, he was trying to go away from the canonical status of New Vegas as a whole. The the, the only issue I have with that, and I have heard people argue that, is that, um, is that New Vegas literally appears in the final shot. Um, Hank mm-hmm. McLean walks and sees the skyline of new vegas where mm-hmm. and there's there's so many references too um you know we get we get the two the two scavengers they're wearing ncr power armor mm-hmm. um i'm well, sorry not power well, armor well, ranger armor not decanonizing the existence mm-hmm. of the city but the story of the Re- reconning. Game. We're, we're talking reconning, reconning the game reconning the story rather like just the fact that new, new vegas exists in a similar design isn't what I think anyone was arguing uh, with Todd Howard, but Todd Howard's made it very clear. He hates that. That's the story that people latch on to. And so, well, it but, is, it honestly is probably one of them. Um, probably might be the most popular fallout game. Now it here, absolutely here's the thing, made by obsidian too. So here's the thing. You talk about these, these timeline issues. And I know from watching the discourse that that is a reason that some people are vehemently, angry at this show i mean they are rapidly angry from some commentary oh it, it it really bothers me too because yeah. it, it it throws a big wrench in everything um i don't know if i would say it was malicious i don't think i agree with them i think they're oh look i'll say this uh, fallout fans are um are kind of like tolkien fans they're um they're they're mm-hmm. very very passionate about things yeah um i don't know if it was necessarily malicious or whether or not it was just a massive oversight because um there are so many references to what happened in fallout new vegas going forward because the show takes place after new vegas by about mm-hmm. 14 years 15 years 15 years um i i think it's a um, i think it's a massive screw up and they're gonna have to fix it and if they don't fix it 
that's going well, to piss a lot of it's going to let's piss get a lot back yeah well, let's Sorry. get back to well, no no it's fine no well, the, well you're you're bringing the lore so we, if people understand where it comes from and, and and that's what i want to talk about as we get into this more the show does a lot of things right and which is why we're all surprised yes and it, it's just a simple thing we're surprised mm -hmm. it was normal and the criticisms i have are normal criticisms acting pacing writing uh inconsistencies and i was talking about this with the guys before we got started there's to me a massive inconsistency and to me it's lazy writing in episode two and then in episode eight in episode two if you guys know uh the battle in in philly between uh maximus and the ghoul the ghoul is fully armed he has the advantage maximus mm -hmm. is a goon in his powered army he barely knows how to use it my, my and favorite it's a weird line is fight. It's a weird he's fight. like, he's like, you drive that thing like a shopping cart shopping or car. something yeah. like that. And, and, like, and, oh and, and he's playing, and, and he beats him. But yet now, in the final battle at the in episode eight, where the Brotherhood of Steel is attacking the remains of the NCR, and Mole Diver is launching attack, the Ghoul infiltrates the battle easily, and he shows up as four Brotherhood powered armors and a bunch of squires are about to assault the control room where the uh, cold fusion is being reacted. He makes a joke. Now, this is, again, winding into some of the back lore stuff where he talks about in the backstory. Coop says, yeah, I was in those powered armors. They had defects, and let's and it killed a lot of people died. And now here he says, gee, when I was in those armors, they had a lot of defects. Let's see if they fixed it. A little part right under the chest plate. And he proceeds to ace all four powered armors in seconds, taking advantage of this mm -hmm. defect. Mm -hmm. Which he already knew about. Which he would know about. Which had been prominent in the very first, the very first power armor that ever existed, the T forty five. And it, well, so, he mentions that in the backstory. And yes. so I just, I so to me, when he fights, when he all out fights Maximus in episode two in Philly, that's a straight up fight. And he's not trying to save Maximus. The ghoul hates he everybody know who in the it show. is. Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. The, with, with the exception of now, at the end of the show, his interest in Lucy because of her connection, to everything that's going on, he equally hates everybody in the wasteland. Why didn't he ace Maximus using the defect in episode two when he had all his weapons? And it's plot armor. Plain it's plot simple. armor. So it, it is. It, and, 100%. It, yep. So to me, I will criticize the show for lazy writing like that just so we could have a cool moment in episode eight and have him take out four four powered armors in seconds. And and then learn that and then when he confronts Hank in the powered armor. Now he doesn't shoot, doesn't kill Hank in the powered armor on purpose because he wants to use him as bait. To find his family, we learned at the end he's clearly hunting his wife. Mm -hmm. He's hunting his wife for two hundred years because, mm -hmm. as we know from the backstory, she is all in evil. She was not a saving grace, and she likely was cryo frozen along with the rest of the head honchos of uh, of Vault Tech. Also, shout out they made a black lady evil. Oof. Yeah, well, well listen, uh, the show did things right. There, the there is a lot of a lot of violence is visited upon women by men in this. And mm -hmm. They don't shy away from it. it listen, the 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 uh, gratuitous violence in this movie, a show, good, it's fine, Sp it's spot on, nice. spot on to the games. By the way, yeah. exploding mm -hmm. heads, exploding limbs, legs, Crunch, I, boom, bang, oh, yeah, they didn't it. shy away from it. Uh, and these are these are like to me, this is regular criticism I'm having. I'm not mm -hmm. making fun of the show. I'm just saying, tighter narrative in some places. Don't be inconsistent. Uh, the, as I said before, uh, and we can now talk about this. To me, Maximus is the weakest part of the show because one, the actor is not very good. He has one emote. I'm I look like I'm about to cry and piss my pants. That's all he can do. And how and, old is he? He's the most 50 year old looking 30 year old I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, is he really 50? No, he's 33. He's 33? But he looks like he's 50. Shit. But, now, now uh Jed is up to one point. So Ryan, this is to you. Uh, I feel like Maximus, there could have been a better story about his development instead of every time he tries to do something right, it's turned comedic and over the top. Like when he tries to save Lucy in Vault 4. Mm. He, finally, it's like, oh, finally, you got up off your ass to do something instead of saying, can we have sex now? Instead of doing that, uh, can we, let, let's do a thing. But then it turns into comedy because he didn't have to do it and there's no repercussions. Yeah. Um, okay, it. so I'm I'm going to... I'm going to allow. Uh, okay, so Fallout is is weird. It's yeah. it's a very weird franchise. It yeah. is um, 
it is very serious, very grotesque, very shocking in a lot of ways, but also at the same time, funny. It's very over the top campy. Um, because so the the split of of when the bombs dropped in 2077, it's kind of like the 1950s on steroids. Yeah. Everything is uh, it's it's like time was frozen in the 1950s, um, and it just progressed past what our our, our normal culture is. They did, you know, like going to the TVs looked like the 1950s. They're called radiation kings, stuff like that. So it's 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 super campy and over the top in many ways, but at the same time, it has some of the most grotesque, awful things. Is is when we went through Vault 32 and saw what the reality of the. They when were they basically, discovered what was going on, they just aced, they just they took themselves yeah. out. We're not gonna and it's them. just and, and that's the, the state of the majority of the vaults that if you walk into in any of the games, yes, they're in such a state of just disgusting decay of horrendous actions that these people did to each other that you're just like it's it almost blows your mind. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's um I, I definitely get that. Um he was a little I understood the comedic relief again, but he but, he needed he finally I did he finally got off his ass and did something and then and, he didn't need to do it and I was like yeah eh, and and then it's when he's about to do it he's gonna stop and take one more handful of popcorn yeah and it's it it's just everything Maximus does and, and I'm I'll give him credit for his character development at least they had him admit he's a liar and but you know what that's more a Lucy character growth moment because it shows that as we were talking about before Lucy who has faced all this shit for two weeks on the surface mm -hmm. She maintains her positive outlook. I like her catchphrase, "Okie dokie." I like it. it's a great catchphrase. It's fun, and it's, it's it works for her. It it could really become a thing if they if they play it right. And she says, "I don't care that you lied to me. I don't care because I see you for who you are. You still do your actions spoke louder than your false words." Mm -hmm. And. It's more of a Lucy moment than Maximus owning up to it. And then during the whole battle with the NCR, Maximus just kind of floats along, doesn't do anything, and then isn't happy about – he shows he's not happy about taking the credit for the victory of the Cold Fusion, but it's not enough. I just feel as though Maximus's character work was lesser than everybody else's character work that was done of who we're supposed to care about. And the actor is just, he's kind of piss poor. He's hes not very good. Yeah. As opposed to uh, the lady who played Lucy. I don't remember her name. She does a great job. Ella Purnell. Mm -hmm. Ella Purnell. Thank you. Ella Purnell. She did a great job. Uh, also, Walt she's very, very pretty. They let very her pretty. Be pretty. They let her yeah, be they, pretty. They let her be yeah. pretty. Although there was one thing, and I mentioned this before, I'm going to mention it again. Uh, it was funny in episode one where. She, on wedding night, she just jumps his bones because it's wedding night. We got to procreate, keep humanity going. Take off the dress, though. Other women are going to have to get married in that. So inconsiderate. <laughs> I, I laughed about it because then I was joking about cousin humping because that proved she was humped by her cousin because that was not first time sex. Yeah, uh, she knew what she was doing. Knew what she was doing, but then Which, but, it, it, right. it also leads into real quick kind of the disgustingness of the vault. Yeah themselves that they're yeah. kind of fucked up <laughs> yeah but now ryan here's the thing all of that is lucy's character it's fun it's that and i get it and i'm okay with it but then in the vault for a moment when she says to maximus while they're sitting in quarantine you want to have sex i was like no lucy don't do that don't do yeah that. And it diminishes her it diminished her character a little bit that she wanted to have promiscuous sex just to pass the time yeah it's um it, it, it kind of does in, in a sense, but um, I, I would also kind of lean toward again as um, so a lot of the characters, especially the ones that come out of the vaults, are very, very naive. It's like it's like releasing a and, and I'm only I'm only uh, I'm, it's it's like releasing a child into the into this ugly world for the first mm -hmm. time, like when they're walking out they're like, I'm going to have a great time. And it, it's like they don't understand that they're they're the weirdo compared to everybody else because everybody else has been living like this for 200 years um so no i i, I do i do understand that um I, I didn't necessarily care for that moment um it, well, especially it, then they make maximus worse that he's afraid to jerk off he thinks it's gross when if you remember in episode one you see a dude jerking off in the barracks yeah. underneath, yeah. underneath so the they're quilt. familiar with the concept so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So, um, 
the the Brotherhood of Steel is um is um well they suck. Yeah, they do. They okay, suck. so um the the Brotherhood of Steel is more like um Elder Maxon's Brotherhood of Steel uh in Fallout 4, very very rigid, very 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 paramilitaristic um to the point of if you don't do your duty, you will be killed. And 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 that's that's the way it is. This is this is a more realistic Brotherhood of Steel than the one we get in Fallout 3 which is Elder Lion's Brotherhood of Steel, which actually had more of a moral compass. It's also why in Fallout 3, we see the brother, uh, Brotherhood of Steel um, uh, outcasts because they left because, because Elder Lion's was not following the actual doctrine of the Brotherhood of Steel. So it, w- it would actually make sense. It, it makes a little bit of sense that, that this was probably actually sexual desire was beaten out of maximus so to speak mm-hmm. because the brotherhood of steel is not about that your your life is the brotherhood I understand that i can yeah, accept so, that but, but it's no. just it, it makes for a lame joke about my penis pops like a pimple it's it's it's, it's oh yeah it's, lame writing. Joke. it's, it's bad writing it's lazy writing and it's all for the joke of let's have promiscuous sex and then <clears> him to come around and say to can we have intercourse now can we do it because i'm eating oysters yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it I, I kind of related it a little bit to um, mm-hmm. queef jokes and Ghostbusters twenty sixteen. That, that's a bit. just that's just what I'm. Uh, but that's why I'm just talking about my honest criticisms of the writing could have been stronger, the dialogue could have been better at points, wh- and it, and I'm not getting the character work that I can see they do because they give Lucy great character work. They give the ghoul Walton Goggins fantastic character work especially those flashback scenes where we're getting the history and and those stuff and all no, i want Ariel. is no, listen i'm not i'm not engaging with her while we're doing this thing. um uh all i all i want is solid character work and we show they can do it and you get guys like walton goggins and you get um uh, uh, uh you get um Colin mclaughlin these are powerful actors who can own scenes and they just own it when they're there and it makes the ghoul compelling even though he is an absolute shit as a ghoul to everybody as opposed to cooper howard who was a patriot who loved his daughter who loved his wife until he found out his wife was evil to the core uh who was down with destruction of the world so that they can play social monopoly uh it's it's, so uh, it's something that we can see they can do but then drop the ball with Maximus. Mm-hmm. And that's well, what also, bugs me. Also on top of that too. So to, to actually add to the fact, one of the reasons that I think Cooper is such a um, compelling character. So a lot of people don't know the ghouls are the result of radiation poisoning to the fact that they, they become these mutated husks themselves. They, they come kind of a little bit zomb- zombified in a sense. Now, there's differences, though. Mm-hmm. There are what are called feral ghouls, which we saw his friend turning they into it. Yeah. And, and also in Super Duper, uh, Mart, um, the feral ghouls, they are, they're mindless. They're savage. They just, their only thing is to kill, kill, kill no, everything. Um, they'll, they'll go after a, a human just as easily as they would go after a death clock. Now, if you're not familiar with Fallout, it's kind of disappointing. I wanted to see a death claw, but I guarantee you. Didn't we we'll see a skull of a death claw at the end there? Uh, you don't. Was that yes. Death claw, we saw the claw of a death claw at the beginning of uh, episode two in the dude's lab when we were seeing uh, dog meat being raised. There was a sheet over a body and a claw hanging out that looked like a death claw's claw. If, if so, I did definitely miss that. Um, uh, so now, but I, that's I will... what I was hoping the bear was in episode two. It's like, oh, please, be yeah, I was yeah, disappointed because... that it was just a mutant bear. Yeah, yeah, well, it's called a Yao Guai, um, yeah. is, is what they are. They're 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 giant mutated grizzly bears. Um, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, so the, the Yao Guai was was it was awesome to see. My problem was is that he shot it in the head once and it died. It's yeah, so it unrealistic, was, it was so dumb. It's so unrealistic. That, that whole bit was dumb, especially with uh, yeah. Titus or whatever. Yeah. And then, and then what's his name? Is, is under um, like, oh, Ma- Michael, what, Michael Rappaport. Ra- uh, Ra- Rappaport. Rappaport. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's such well, a dumbass. Like, he, he is a dumbass. He and that's why, I'm, that's why I'm glad he died because it, it kind of um, encompasses his real life personality a little bit that he sucks. <laughs> so, mm. um, 
but yeah so anyway the yalaguay i would have been when when he shot it once and killed it i, I and even in the head because the the yalaguay skull is modified so much you would actually have to fire probably 10 rounds in the row at the same point to actually finally have one or two penetrated skull that's how mm -hmm. mutated these bears are um they're incredibly hard to kill the only thing probably harder to kill is probably a death claw mm -hmm. and that's where i was kind of i was kind of leaning it was going to be a death claw because death claws um are famous for making their caves in in where radiation barrels mm -hmm. are um that the the u.s government again in the past just decided to tuck away in a in a hole and leave them so let me let me ask you this um we i'm surprised they didn't do any super mutants in this season one um okay so when, when we actually went into the super duper mart a little bit i actually half expected to have that be super mm -hmm. mutants because super mutants um are cannibalistic to everything um humans other super mutants they'll eat anything and they usually take residence and large spaces kind of like a super duper mart or something like that um an old hospital you encounter them a lot um yes. i kind of feel like that was a missed opportunity yeah I, I kept waiting for a super mutant to show up and i was surprised that we had so much focus on ghouls yeah so if for, for those who don't know uh super mutants are actually um basically human beings who were uh experimented on using the the fev virus uh, they mentioned it they mentioned it when yes. that one scientist in the recording of what they wanted yeah do, which again i was surprised we didn't get a super mutant at least once because yes ariel super mutants are intelligent um so they're, they're actually there's an intelligent as a human being mm -hmm. um they came out of the mariposa military base from fallout one and that is ultimately the the um that is the launching point and and the the ultimate bad guy is the the master uh which is is basically um a fallout one so but but the super mutants coming out of the mariposa military base are a very different kind of super mutant um they're they're highly intelligent they were engineered to be intelligent the standard super mutants you see in the majority of the wastelands are ones that have stumbled in and fallen into a vat of fev because they found a lab and they're like tr they're trying to pillage it and then they're like going what's this and Maybe they drank some or what, whatever. The people are stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, once you become a super mutant, your sole goal is because super mutants are sterile. You have to make more. You have to kidnap people to make more. You can't just bang out another super mutant. So, <clears throat> so I, yeah, I, I guess in, if they do too, and let's let's shift the conversation to that. The interesting thing about Jonathan Nolan, he has a record of putting out stellar season ones. Mm -hmm. And a record of putting out shit season twos and beyond, because and he either just progressively worse. Yeah, he either mm -hmm. walks away from the project himself and turns it over to lesser people, or like bends the knee to his wife or something and lets her work. <laughs> yeah. Away. And uh -huh. so, he, where wherever they decide to go with this, I mean, I, I will probably. Well, let's about this though. So this was a surprise success. We've talked about this because Very it's a normal surprising. show, and. The discourse has been weird in terms of, I mean, Jed, you mentioned earlier, people are really unhappy if you just don't love it completely. Mm -hmm. It's all or nothing for them. Like, if yeah. it's not the worst thing in the world, it's the best thing in the world. And I, I, I just don't understand that perspective because even with going back to some of the old stuff, I'm not just going to say, like on Saturday Night Drive-In, I'm not just going to say, oh, it's old, I'm giving it a 10. Uh, mm -hmm. There still needs to be nuance in every discussion that we have whether or not it be an older or new thing. And this show just, it isn't worthy of a nine or a 10. I'm sorry. I gave it a seven. I gave it yeah, a seven. Just to slot in my thoughts briefly, I've only watched the first two episodes, so this is very much an early type review, and I don't think I'm going to go any further in it because I'm just overall bored with it. Whoever's in charge of the music, the set design, the costuming, they did a phenomenal job. Those people need promotions. Those people did a great job with Fallout. Whoever did the writing it's mediocre at the very very best as very uh, average as adam knows and anyone who watches drive-in knows one of my big things is coincidences there's a lot of coincidences in the first two episodes and a lot of things that are just the the plot just progresses for the plot's sake i don't feel like there's any plot momentum that makes a whole lot of sense and the characters are fine lucy and the ghoul are the two people that i, I like everyone else i don't give a flying fuck about 
but uh, Lucy, Lucy's great overall. Uh, definitely enjoy her naivete. It makes sense for her to be so naive and uh, the evolution that we see with her, but it's just not very well written. Uh, I just genuinely think it's okay at best when it comes to and the script. That's my assessment as well. The script, it, it's, it's average. It's nothing spectacular. Mm -hmm. I see people saying fantastic. And uh, I'm happy that it was normal. I mean, it's kind of, if somebody, yeah. somebody equated it in a recent discussion with me, to, it's kind of a One Piece thing where we expected, those of us who were hardcore One Piece fans, we expected an abomination, even though Oda Sensei was going to be involved. And what we got was something that wasn't completely what we wanted, but it was okay. And what we got out of this is an okay show that, as you said, it just goes from one plot to the next. And that's kind of all it yeah. does. It moves from one scene to the next, and it moves the plot along here and there. Characters interacting. Sometimes it feels coincidental. Sometimes you can understand this. Uh, it, but it just kind of moves along in a natural, normal way. And I I think we should praise it for being normal and not super engineered. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we should be overpraising it. And that's kind of what I feel like we're getting with this. People are overpraising it because it wasn't a massive disappointment. And uh, Jay, I think you mentioned this earlier. The bar is so low mm -hmm. on everything that we watch and have to deal with. I mean, I am now this week. Uh, we get uh, Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Part Two. I hope <laughs> it fails. Well, uh, I already have my. I've told you guys what my title mm -hmm. card is going to be. I'm not going to spoil it for the fan for 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 the for everybody in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the audience here. But uh, we got that. We are now then also. A couple of short weeks away, three weeks away from Doctor Who season one with Shudi Gatwa as Shudi Gatwa. Jeremy and I are going to be covering that. Uh, we got, we are now we're a month and a half away from the Acolyt. If y'all want a third, right. I'll I'll wait in. You can you can you can jump in whenever you want. We're 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 going to be streaming it on Saturday it's nights. So bad. We're going to be streaming it on Saturday nights. So. Um, People can come and go if they want. You guys want to come and go? Yeah, yeah. That's no, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I, yeah. I can't bring myself to watch it yet. I, I need your audience might bully you into it though. They might, but they might. I, I just can't do it anymore. Yeah. Every, so, I mean, every video you put out, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in the chat now. Be like, going, oh, Jed needs to watch. Yeah, I mean, Jeremy and I, we've worked this out since they're releasing it on Friday nights, and we can't fit it in for Ballbusters. We're gonna yeah. live, we're gonna live stream, review it on Saturday nights after driving. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Yeah, I think that's uh, a, I think that's a good call. Yeah, it's because we want to talk. We don't want to do a legitimate review. We want to we want to just roast the hell out of it, talking about it. That's what we want to do. Oh, so, I mean, season one's so, already dead. So yeah, well yeah. So then we have Acolyte in June, and that's a lot of likely horrible shit in the next month and a half, and then there'll be pro what is likely to be a moment of oasis with house with Hot D two. Mm -hmm. Hot D two. Oh, I can't wait! I'm so excited. And, but, but but here's the thing: the bar is so low, and Hot D two may be worthy of the praise it's likely going to get because it's earned it with a season one. But anything that comes out is just if it's if it's an average show like this, it looks like and looks and tastes and smells like ambrosia compared to what. Acolyte, the Dizzy Star Wars, Rings mm -hmm. of Power, yeah. all the shit. And I think people are so desensitized. Maybe I'm using that wrong. Or maybe they're hypersensitive to shit being so bad. And I when would, yeah, I go with that. When something is just okay, it feels like it's the greatest thing in the world because yeah. <clears throat> it just did what a regular show from 10 years ago used to do. Just hit the marks of okay. Here's good characters. Here's a plot that's going to move along without any crazy inconsistencies. Yeah, here's and an it's, intriguing it's, world. It's it's a world that you can that you that you stuff. It it's got source material that you can go play around with. That you can go play and enjoy yourself. And with decent acting, halfway decent writing in this case, you get that kind of thing. And suddenly, comparatively, you think it's the most brilliant thing. Where, but it's just. This would have been an average show 10 years ago. And it being the normal show that it is, I, I pose the question now. Why did Amazon batch drop this? It's moronic. It, it was massively moronic. I have a massive problem with that. Um, the binge model is fun. 
right? When when mm-hmm. you're obsessed with something, you want to you just you want it all you can get. You're gluttonous. It lends to basically some of the problems with our actual country because people want want it. They want it now. It needed to be weekly. I don't. I don't. It I don't should know. have been does, weekly. Does Listen, Amazon have something else coming out? That no. Like going, and here's the question: This show was, and Alan Richson just put his. Look, 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 we're not so talking about that. We're not talking about that. We're not talking. Well, I know. About I'm that. just saying, but like, yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch Reacher. I only watched the first three episodes of Reacher. I ain't going back. I'm not. I don't no. care. I'm done. There's a lot also, of people who are also, not going back. Uh, also, yeah. I mean, also, also because um, Strand the Swan didn't take her top off, so that was the one sex scene probably. So I didn't. I, I have nothing to look forward to anyway. No. Uh, but no. So I'm not. I don't care about Reacher. I don't care. I, I'm even questioning about seeing the un, the ungentlemanly movie with he's in with. Um, with Cavill. With Henry Cavill, out. yeah. The yeah. League of I was excited for that. Warfare. Now I'm going to probably wait. It's not going to get my money because I don't want to I don't want to support Alan Richson for being crazy. But that's a different discussion, different thing. Well, and but, after our guy failed, I'm not going to watch it just because Henry Cavill's in it. Yeah, so. yeah. But what we have here is a situation, this should have been weekly. Mm-hmm. And this is a show that, for all intents and purposes, is a decent show. Well, and it's not yeah, a yeah. Netflix situation. Well, let me let me finish the point though. No, my point. Yet, with a show like Wheel of Time, Waste of Prime, Wheel of Prime, whatever fucking joke I usually make of that, that show was horrendous. It was horrible. You want to talk about lore breaking and bad acting, bad characters, and agenda that had it all in spades, and they rolled that shit out on a weekly basis after a three episode premiere. Yet this show, which isn't really agenda driven, except for that moments in the first episode. And has a regular story that's just going to move along. They couldn't drop that for eight weeks and give me weekly content. No, that doesn't make sense to me. They had a normal show that would probably do really well on a weekly basis, but they backdrop drop it. I don't get this. This boggles my mind. I mean, everybody assumed after the whole Echo fiasco that this was Amazon pulling a Disney saying, oh, we mm-hmm. just got to get this shit out. It, they think it's bad, yeah. Yeah, so that we can now and, – and, and I guarantee they're not going to batch drop Rings of Power Season 2, which according to As, which I heard this morning, they are now done with editing, so there is a chance it could be out by the fall or winter. Oh, I hope it's Mortal hot Country. Saint. Coming up against each other, just like they did. Last I don't think time. so. I don't think they get it out by the summer at this one. Doesn't sound like they will if it just finishes editing. I don't know. So, but I won't. Mm-hmm. Mortal Country. But but I don't. They're they're mm-hmm. not going to batch drop that. They're going to run that horse shit out one week at a time after likely a two episode premiere. That's going to hurt my brain. And it, it, it's not like Netflix, where Netflix has a brand built mm-hmm. upon the binge model. Yeah. They're not yeah. contradicting their normal way of doing things that yeah. would make their audience upset. This is Amazon, who, like you've said with several examples, is known for doing two to three episode launch and then weekly. They're going yeah. against their normal model, and it's hurting the show. And there's still people out there. The binge model argument is on fire right now on Twitter, and people still just saying, good show means good show. And the binge model is irrelevant and i've never agreed with that because it's so easy to contradict do you want two weeks of talking about a great show or do you want eight weeks about talking about a great show? why do you think i rushed my episode three to eight review out this morning i i did the record this morning because in a week we're not gonna be talking about following no one's gonna be talking about it and ign i'm actually agreeing with ign right now which is crazy because they're coming out on the side of week to week model is the better model and people are trashing them for it because mm-hmm. they've got numbers from Netflix saying Netflix said, yeah, we see a massive drop off in viewership after a week or two out on most of our shows. Mm-hmm. That's bad for viewership. And for the yeah. platforms that use advertising, that's bad for advertising. You generally have mm-hmm. low reviews when you do the binge model. You have generally lower interest in yes. You can't build up to a great conclusion. You can't and, build up to a bigger audience. And think no, about no. the conversation that could have been had about a guy like me who was so negative going in. Week to week, watching me change my tune, watching me having to eat crow. That's much better than me just rushing this out. And in a minute over this past 72 hours, I'm just trying to get my points out. And then I say I'm wrong. And then we're going to move on. And no one's going to care that I was wrong in two weeks anymore. Yeah. See, so in me, as somebody who who's a massive Fallout fan, like going Fallout is one of my favorite things. I... And, and again, I'm, 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 not, I'm not on a... I really like the show. But when I say I really like the show, because of the flaws I see, I'm thinking eight out of ten. I'm not going to say it's a nine or a ten or anything like that. That's fair. Um, 
you yeah. know, and, 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 and of course, you know, you said that, it, that it's, it's a regular show and you gave it a seven. So I'm, I'm like one point above you. Um, I'm going to be invested for a season two, no matter what, but mm -hmm. I'm also very invested in the mm -hmm. games. I, I've, I've played all the games, even the controversial fallout 76. Um, I like fallout 76 when it launched, did it have a lot of problems? Yes. Is somebody, again, I'll say this until the moon and back. I helped beta test it on the PlayStation 4. It had a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. That being said, it is a much better game. They have they have they have changed so many things. If you've tried it once, I say go try it again. Um, but yes, yeah, so I will always be in the camp of I want season two. N now there there is something to be said that they that they they've seen a two hundred percent increase on Steam for people downloading. Fallout content, the Fallout video games now because people are That's very awesome. intrigued. People want to play That's, it. I mean, people, people want to play it. People yes. in, our, in our immediate circle are firing yeah. it up to play shit right now. Yeah, exactly. So that is that is a very, very positive thing. That being said, though, weekly, and I agree with Jay Frazier, we, and, and all, everybody here, weekly would have been 10 times better than the binge. Here's the thing. From a content creator's perspective, I like weekly. From a consumer perspective, a customer... I like binge, but you know what? I make my own binge. I wait. Everybody knows uh, me and my anime taste, Ray, way I do things now. I wait three months mm -hmm. so that the entire seasons of an anime are done so that I can just mm -hmm. watch it all at once. And that that and I'm waiting because I'm not reviewing anime. I'm that's for my personal enjoyment, and I can then just wait for it. I have been marathoning things my whole life. I mean, we you Last night, you guys can know this. If you watch, uh, watch Dry when you're driving. We went on a, a massive NCIS <laughs> rabbit hole talk. Before there were and times, after the end of the show. Yeah, there were times uh, in the latter year, in in the last decade at end of seasons of NCIS, I would wait four weeks. I would let the final four episodes of every season pile up because I wanted to watch whatever the concluding story was in one push. Mm -hmm. But that's my choice. Uh, and yes. And it, 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 it was done out of my, my thing. And I'm not forcing that my way to watch in anybody. And the binge model right now, it's forcing everybody to watch it in a certain way. And it's also, as I said a while ago, creating a very weird perception of you need to watch all of it now before you can give your take. You can't give an individual take on every episode. You need to watch it all. And I, that is it's a weird thing. I've participated that's slightly in that, but only against people who haven't watched it at all. They just heard the spoilers and they're like, well, that's different. That's, that's very different. different. Yeah. Look, sh shout out to Shadu. Um, love you, kid, but you you heard the spoilers about it, and he's he's one of those people who's so angry thinking that they that they kind of pissed on Fallout One, Fallout Two, and Fallout New Vegas. That is not a, in, yeah. in the, the big hope moment I talked about, there's only one flag flying while the hopeful music plays. One flag. And it's my favorite faction. Yeah. Again, and 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 what um I actually don't disagree with what Third Eye said. The the NCR was massively flawed, and it had a lot of problems. It was on it was on the decline in Fallout New Vegas. It kind of lends credence to the fact that like, the fact that Shady Sands, unfortunately, was wiped out. A big canonical beloved place from Fallout One to Fallout New Vegas. That um, it it maybe needed a little bit of a reset and now the NCR can build, build up and be better than it was before with what had happened with the, the cold fusion. But that being said, anyway, um, you're, you're talking about an inherent problem on a things. People either hear spoilers mm -hmm. and they want to give their commentary. And that's not how you want to deal with the stuff. I mean, in my case, I was simply watching the episode show one episode at a time. I would take a day at a time because I, I started off long form review with the first episode but then I realized when I watch episode two and I realized, oh, they're just kind of – it's a regular show and it's doing regular stuff. I don't have much to talk about here. I can knock this out and literally – instead of 35 minutes, I can do it in 12 minutes. And I did it. One take, boom, we're done. And then the rest of it, okay, watching it uh, over yesterday, it literally just moves along. So I don't have much to say except for natural criticisms that then I can only give once I've completed the show talking about writing, pacing, narrative, acting, uh, inconsistencies, lazy writing, that kind of stuff. Then, But if you're coming to my channel and people who come to my channel know that I want to review episodes one at a time. I try not to do a batch review because it, 
I want to talk about something, especially if it's something that deserves to be talked about, or in many cases, with the current content of today, ridiculed heavily. Mm -hmm. But this was a case of, why are you yelling at me because I had to take on the first episode and I haven't watched the rest of it? Why are you yelling at me about this? Why don't you just wait for me to finish it? Because yeah. obviously, I, I anybody who knows me as I review stuff, I'm, I, I can be objective when I want to instead of just being subjectively and making fun of it. And I try to give fair takes. That's why people have asked me to do Hot D Season 2 because I'm going to give a really objective review because I don't care about the franchise. I'm not into germ stuff. But I'm going to watch it because it might be good. And then I'll be able to tell you, I'll be able to tell you without any sort of fanboy goggles on or anything. You'll say, okay, this worked for me, this didn't work for me. Then that it's that it's it's gonna it's a strange circumstance that we're gonna get with me in that case. And I, I it's the problem that I mentioned this earlier, talking about the stands and their push for positivity conversations only. It's our version of it. If something isn't bad but you're not universally in love with it, our own side is kind of going to go over the top and say, well, oh, no, no, you can't talk bad about this. It was good. You don't get, you can't criticize it. No, because then you might not get more of the good stuff. It's the pendulum argument. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be super positive about everything. We can have legitimate discussions over debates. And now when something's swinging back, let us not become that which we have criticized by going too far and not allowing conversation that should be legitimate. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that because I actually kind of feel like a little bit of the opposite. I didn't hate the new Ghostbusters. I didn't. I had fun. My, my I, dad and I went and saw it, and I enjoyed it. I didn't watch it because I don't care. And and no, and, and that's perfectly fine. I have no issue with that. What, 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 I, what I had an issue with is I unfortunately saw people on our side taking things from the movie that I'm like, I... I, you're either you're, you're either ramped up because you've been doing this for too long or and, and I think that's what it is. I'm not going to I'm not going to call anybody disingenuous on our side. I, I think that that would be very it's the hypersensitivity Ill, argument, the hypersensitivity it's, it's, argument. It's the same yeah. thing that I dealt with talking about Final Fantasy seven remake and rebirth for people and, and who it, are so who were so angry that it wasn't one for one. And they're so worried about all these things that they're so hypersensitive that any little change sets them off. When in the case of remake and rebirth, they were never meant to be one for ones. And if you are denying yourself that they are excellent games with a lot of fun that shows respect to the characters and the story overall. Mm -hmm. and, and again, and look, I'm I'm just as guilty of, of hyper uh, of hypersensitivity because mm -hmm. I had going into this and 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 the dropping it all is one. And Adam, I know because I because I talked to you about this, I put it in the actual chat. I was like this doesn't bode well. This does not look good. It's yeah. as bad as I think it is. And I was so wrong. I was very wrong. But here's the thing. As adults, and in this case, Dragon Lady notwithstanding, as men, we can admit we're wrong. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, there's no weakness in that. There's no weakness in saying, wow, I had a complete misconception when the facts and the logic and the evidence are put before me, if I can say, okay, I was wrong. This is not what I thought it was. It ain't perfect. I'm going to give regular criticism now, not hyperbolic over the top blah, 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 stuff where we, where we rip shit apart roasting. When I do that, that should, I should be allowed to have a change of opinion and admit I'm wrong without people telling me you can't not, admit you're wrong which is what i feel is going on in some cases mm -hmm. with fall as an example around some people i feel are saying if you were harsh on this before oh that didn't age well i hate I, you know I, i'm sick of that phrase that didn't age well i'm sick yeah. and tired of it it's one of these things that's been that's been beat to death because guess what as jed pointed out and i pointed out earlier when we do the takes on the news at the of the moment working with quotes as they are with all the major websites talking about it as well that's what we have to work with, and that's our opinion in the moment. But if new evidence comes to the forefront and we see something that is actually the opposite of what we thought, we are allowed to change our opinions. And then when we're man enough to admit we're wrong, then you should be able to go, you should be able to go okay, thank you. You said you were wrong. And all things should be settled at that point. 
Nobody should be angry at me over my episode one takes when I come around and say I was wrong about the whole thing. Because I admitted it. I'm not hiding behind. The, the only slight excuse I might hide behind is the fact that Jonathan Nolan shot his mouth off when he shouldn't have and should have let things be quiet. Then I never would have said anything at all, and I just would have waited for the show. That's that. That's the most defense I can put up for myself. But otherwise, I was wrong. How many more times? Dude, a year ago, remember the whole goddamn Avatar 2 shit where we were all fucking wrong about how much money it would make? Mm-hmm. That was terrible. I hated that, but I had to walk out and say, "Gee, I was wrong." I said it wouldn't hit two billion, and it hit two billion. Yeah, I well, was wrong. I, I, I was wrong too. Um, and, and the reason I say this is because I've never been a fan of the Avatar movies, and I know that's well, a yeah. super hot take. I don't it's, care. It's it's. it's, it's well, I don't care. Thing. But this is from I, a guy who loves James Cameron's understand. Titanic. Here's the thing: I was wrong because I don't understand. <laughs> it. I don't understand how everybody just watches that schlock. Avatar is schlock. I don't understand how people watch it. Mm-hmm. They, the world loves it, though. But they love it. Now, go nuts, there. We go nuts, the sh- We say it's the same shit about Barbie, but Dre wisely found a way to make it make sense for us, where we then got it, why Barbie worked. If, you, if there's facts and evidence in, in, in play that makes things make sense, then I will say I'm wrong if something is wrong. But I would like there to be room for people to wait for us to admit we're wrong instead of just dogpiling before giving us a chance to finish. And that's why this binge model with this show is annoying because we didn't get the chance to admit we're wrong before they all for, for the people who watched it all in one night. Sorry, but I had other things to do. I had yeah, other streams and- to do. I had other shit to play. And I had other commitments I had to take part of. Not, not only the fact I got to do goddamn laundry and I got to feed myself. Yeah, no, is is somebody who pretty much binge watched it Friday to Friday night. Um, oh. I was like, well, a, a bunch of a bunch of our panelists are in you know Vegas for the meetup, and it's like going, well, it's like it was a night oh, off for a lot of us. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call the show. Yeah, <laughs> just gonna, I, I, I y'all took have fun off for the most part. I, I, <laughs> I watch it fall. Out. You'll go have fun. I watched the first episode on Thursday to get it out there. I mean, I could have binge watched it, but I had other things to do. And then I was invited to go on another stream on Friday night to do something since mm. I wasn't on Ballbusters. So I had other commitments, other things to do. And to be to to be attacked for not watching it all at once and not being able to get full opinion, it's unreasonable. And it's coming from mm-hmm. our side is the problem. It's not coming from – I mean, there were some weirdos in there. There were some. And I see some of them on – who, and I see some of them who are – on X Twitter, who are the weirdos, and they love it too. But the, it's as as uh, as I saw here, um, as Jay Fraser push it in. I mean, the fellowship is diverse of opinion, and we can and we love that we have the opinions. We have good fights, good debates. Mm-hmm. But the PTSD over the hypersensitivity is a real thing. Oh, absolutely, it is. I mean, I agree that's with why them. anybody who watches As knows that As hasn't watched or reviewed anything in months. He can't yeah, if something that... is bad, he can't get through one episode anymore because he mm-hmm. loses it. He can't handle it anymore. He's he he burned himself out. Now, me, I've got a weird thing where I I I can watch horrible shit. And as soon as I'm and as soon as I'm done with it, I can get rid of it and move on to the next one. Also, yeah, I'm also not a 370,000 channel that has its built-in audience. I'm I have to do this shit. I have to watch well, it. Yeah, to because what Ash audience. just celebrated his eleventh year 12. on YouTube? 12. 12? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's he's yeah. been on for a while. Yeah, yeah, when it's stuff that bad, time. like what what I mean, Gary both. does. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, both, you know. uh, But when it comes to really, really bad stuff like Rings of Power, or even Batwoman, I can find a sadistic pleasure, a yes. masochistic pleasure in watching it and reviewing it. But while I, I can't even bring myself to watch the well, third episode because that's because just- you're bored. bored. That's I'm it. bored. It's not masochistic enjoyment. Like, this is so yeah. bad. I got to see how bad it's going to get. But Paula, I, I just yeah. don't and care. For Doctor Who next month, it's spite. Spite is what's driving me to do that because I these assholes, they won this one, but I'm going to make them pay for every inch and I'm going to be, I'm going to annoy them to no end because mm-hmm. it's spite. See, and, and, and that's they where they don't get their victory lap. They don't get their victory lap. That's where it'll flop for me. Uh, Doctor Who, I'm. I know of Doctor Who. I'm not a huge fan. It's not something that 
I think it's I think the past shows have been very have been awesome, but it's never something that, that I've been super invested in. So mm-hmm. I'm the opposite, like going Fallout sucked me in from from moment one mm-hmm. because I I have immersed myself in that world for so long. I mean, <clears throat> my PlayStation 3 used to crash all the time because I had like mm-hmm. 360 hours in Fallout 3. Mm. And like 326 in Fallout New Vegas. Like it would literally, if I didn't have separate save files. It would crash because the auto files keep saving because they be, because they became before. like like uh, six gigabytes or something crazy like that. It'd be like going yeah. six thousand five hundred. I remember, 6, I'm really I remember like, going back and deleting my Fallout Four saves mm-hmm. to, to like wow these kids keep piling fun. up. What's going on here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you're talking about Ryan uh, Doctor Who is my number one franchise. I know it very very well. It's so big that I can't call myself an expert in it. I don't think anyone can really call themselves an expert in Doctor Who just because of how big it is. But it is my number one franchise, and I put in years into watching the shit and getting like sadistic pleasure from watching the Jodie Whittaker era and whatnot. It's just we're what six years now into the crap. And I, I just can't do it anymore. I can't see mm-hmm. Doctor Who desecrated anymore, especially with them finally at least the Jodie Whittaker era, they didn't reference <laughs> old Doctor Who very much. But now with the Shudigawa era Shudigawa. we're getting it's Mel special. back from Classic Who. We're getting uh Kate Stewart destroyed. Like, we got a little bit of that power of the doctor and whatnot with classic mm-hmm. companions but shooting got was there is very much like we're not just going to ignore the past and make something horrible we're going to take stuff from the past and make it horrible and that's and just so much worse that's where that my I, spite I comes in mm-hmm. the spite for what they're doing the spite for that these weirdos who have claimed this as their victory are celebrating it so hard that's where my spite comes in and i want to ruin their birthday that's what well, i want to uh- do I, I actually haven't told you this, Adam. I'm I'm debating whether or not to get into a Twitter fight with someone. The uh, an editor from Bleeding Cool commented on one of my old tweets. Oh, about the the new uh, what is it? The Indian chick who's going to be the companion in season two. He commented on my tweet from when that was initially announced, and I mm-hmm. I'm debating whether or not to get into it with him because yeah, um, the, the tweet was is this a planned plot point or a firing? And he said it was neither. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing. I when when it comes to me in, in Twitter, I just drop grenades and I walk away. And whether they explode and cause damage or not, I don't care. I never look. I never look back. I never do anything. <laughs> only time I reply to stuff is when I'm like shitting on Dermy or something like that. That's the only time I go into it. When one of the when one of our little little weird circle things happen, where we all get each other involved and weirdness is weird, weird disabounds. That's the only time I keep replying. But normally, I'll say something and I walk away because mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care at all. I, uh, I have to be honest. I probably, in in my opinion, I lean lean towards a firing because, again, the actress herself, she is, she's pretty, and well, she and, doesn't and the, seem over the top with the, the politics on her the, Instagram. If you go look at it, yeah. the problem is that there's a recent reports that they're both going to be equal companions. That she's. Not I saw a picture. Control. They they brought out a picture yesterday. Oh, did so they really? We, we do know. We do know for a long time. We have known for a while that she will be in the second season, but it's debated whether or not it would be like Martha from season four of uh, New Who, where she's just like a couple episodes. But it looks like she's going to be an equal companion with this other chick. And the funny part is that there is a person working with the BBC who's quoted. It's not an official quote from a website or anything, so this might not be true. But they they're quoted in saying it's very exciting to have two companions on the TARDIS. That's never been done before. Oh, shut up. <sighs> shut up. Yeah, breaking new grounds, guys. See, Let's th- break th- them th- grounds. This is why, to go back to what we talked about, this is why we have PTSD over this shit. Because they say something else and we just go, oh, God, not again. Not again. Well, yeah, you, you have those moments where you go, oh, God damn it. And that's the thing. God damn it. Uh, but I can, I, for people that worry, I'm I, I'm fine. I don't have a heart condition. When you see me rage out, don't worry. I am perfectly <laughs> calm. Actual... Yeah, people worry for me sometimes. Adam's apparently. heart's gonna explode. They worry. Be like, more guys, worried about Dermy's heart exploding. Yeah, guys, we whenever Wheel of Time comes out, we what, worry. Well, here's guy. When you see that, you gotta understand. My heart rate is perfectly fine. I half half of it is for show half of it it's the real but it's youtube performance remember that i'm I'm dialing it up for your entertainment but i am that pissed off i'm just dialing it up for entertainment and 
I'm angry, but don't worry about me. I handle this stuff just fine. Never have to worry. And I'm going to keep doing it because we got a lot of year left and a lot of shit left. That's going to be bad this year. And, uh, well, that's, well, I have, look, I can go like this and my skin will get red. I have a thing where my skin gets red very easily. It's just a, it's hey, Ariel. What he's not way. telling you is that behind the scenes he drinks, and that's how he gets through it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a natural reaction. I don't drink. It, things might be better if I did. Maybe I wouldn't handle. Something no, like no, drinks bad for you. Don't drink. Yeah, I, I, I. Last time I drank, I drank once this year for the first time forever on my birthday stream, and I don't like. I, I said I don't like to drink on a stream because one, I didn't have anybody set up to catch me if I fell, but two, yeah. I don't like to be not being in control of my stream. <laughs> Yeah, like, no, not, do not um, drink on stream. I, I yeah. did it once and we'll never do it again. Yeah, I'm I mean, not like, doing I might it again. have a beer. I might have one well, beer occasionally also, on stream, but like actually my, drink. My oh, chat... you're talking about the Witcher season three when when oh, like no, no, oh, no, I, that wasn't I, it. I'm not talking about that was pre-recorded, so I knew I was gonna be safe on oh, that. Oh yeah, that's but, right. It was pre-recorded, no, wasn't it? I did I did have a stream uh, four months into my YouTube channel that uh, I got wasted on. Yeah, it's never gonna happen again. No, what what I for me thing is uh my chat, as you all know, my chat seems to like to sit here most of the time and listen to what we have to say. Some of you want to torture, like Ariel and Legatus will happily torture me over shit. But they, my chat lets you see me suffer when I do reviews, not see me suffer from hurting myself. It's, this isn't this isn't a dermy situation where <laughs> money is know. paid to watch him cause himself all kinds of internal discomfort. He's the king of that. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's that <laughs> that's the difference. My my chat wants to see me suffer when I make my art, not see me suffer on on stream. So they didn't keep making me take drinks on my birthday to get me blasted, and uh, so it's not a thing over here. So I'm not gonna do it. And also, I don't like not being in control of my stream because let's be honest, most of the times the streams on this channel they're meant for discussions. We're meant to be having in depth discussions, and I want to be able to hold a thought in my head, not worrying if I'm doing a different kind of babbling than I normally do. And that's what happens when I when I drink. Because you got to when I get drunk, I'm a happy drunk. I'm a babbler. I'm, I like to I like to be stupid and silly. But you talk more than you already do when you're drunk. Okay. Yeah, I will ramble hard when I'm drunk. I also want to <laughs> sing. I also want to sing. I'm a singer. Back in the day, I was at least. Granted, we were singing Metallica, but that was different. Um, <laughs> anyway, See, also just for the record, I still have not forgiven Jed for the Witcher season three pre-record. Both no. of them. Well, yeah, well, of course, Anna, you guys did <laughs> super chat me, but you didn't super chat me to make me suffer. You just said, here, take a drink. But it, it wasn't the way people super chat jer Dermy to kill Dermy to make it so much worse. Yeah. yeah. Dude, but yeah, dude, uh, Ryan, I had a lot of fun. Go ahead, dude. Sorry. Are you excited for uh, season four, which will finally start filming, it looks like? And no. uh, Sirens of the Deep and Why? the Rats. Well you're, well, you're making, all right, listen, you're already making me watch the Rats. So that, the the rats is gonna be glorious. Oh, that's, that's gonna right. be like we're getting... I think it's gonna be worse oh, than Blood oh. Origin. Uh, you, you know what, man? Like going that that was fun because we were all like just just clowning the shit out of it. But at the same time, that is probably the longest set of stream, uh, the longest mm -hmm. recording. Unicorn I've ever done. penis. The unicorn. yeah, there there was unicorn penis. Well, that was well, what? that see that that's that moment of like Dermy. Dermy was the one obsessed with it. I just pointed it out. He's the one that kept talking about it. He we had footage. It up, yeah. <laughs> well, that's probably why there was a there was a unicorn humping him at the the meetup in the Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I saw that. Uh, it was we, My Little Pony. Cloud but, gets that one. <laughs> but I know you guys don't care about it that much. But there is some good positive Witcher stuff to look to look forward to. In less than a year, we're getting a new Witcher book. I am excited for that. I am ready for it my body is and you can still it. play the games go play the games mm -hmm. yeah yeah all right uh that was that was a nice round out discussion everything uh all in all when it comes to fallout guys it's an okay show uh I, i'm gonna get i'm gonna get yeah. my i'm gonna edit my review a little while after this i gotta i gotta make some food i got i got nothing prepared i gotta go do a whole thing in the kids i gotta make food so uh, I, i'll give you my final thoughts uh please watch it please comment appropriately and we'll hopefully, uh, hopefully I can put it to bed and I won't have to think about it anymore after this until season two, probably two yeah. years away at least. Keep, look, oh, give it a shot. It, it was yeah. enough that we were all entertained, right? Again, Adam seven, me I, and eight. I mean, my yeah, I'm, I'm at a five or a six. I mean, my entertainment value was, okay, it was something that I watched. It got me mm -hmm. through the evening. 
I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, what I was doing, honestly, I was more excited to go back and watch. I was I started watching TNG, so I was more excited to go back and watch Next Generation. Well, that's <laughs> not fair. Watching that too. It's TNG. <laughs> I know, but I started watching it after after uh, uh, Friday night. I had nothing to do, so I was like, "Fuck it, I'm keep." I'm, I'm, Keep I I had started uh, Farpoint and I put it back in. I was like, shit. You, you want to hear the irony of like after we reviewed National Treasure last night? I was like, I'm I'm gonna watch National Treasure again. I, I want to watch it. I'm excited. Uh, it, it, and I was like, I kind of want to watch a Jerry Bruckheimer movie that's better. And I was like, so I put on fucking Armageddon. <laughs> it was I watched great all two, I know I watched all two and a half hours of that fucking movie. Yeah, it's I mean, dumb, but it's so much fun. It I'm all so out of good. I'm all out of anime at the moment because I finished last season's stuff. So I was like, gee, what can I watch? And I just looked over and said, motherfucker, I'm going to watch TNG. It's right there. And, and I just put it. And so I'm, 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 I'm having you such should, a good time. You I'm should rewatch time. NCIS. I just rewatched it. I can't do all it. All three of us need to rewatch up to uh, Tony's departure. We'll call that the show. Mm. When Tony leaves, and then we'll have a show about it. We uh, should. I got. Mm. I just did it, man. Maybe, it, maybe later. We'll, we'll maybe do later. up to Tony's departure, and then you have to watch when. Well, I could watch Abby it all in my head right now. When right it, now. you got to watch the episode where Abby leaves, the episode where Giz leaves, the Ducky, mm. like just the the cherry picked episodes after Tony leaves. Look, if y'all y'all want to <sighs> set this up, like maybe a year in the future, uh, so they get because again, that's, that's a lot of content, right? You know, yeah, we're, yeah, we're talking a about, lot. yeah. So it's like I mean, a, I'm all for it. We can't pull a uh, what you call a, a a Star Trek stream like you guys do and go. <laughs> We're not, yeah, that's the rest that's of our not lives. happening. That's not happening. 23 yeah. seasons, either way. No, no, uh, no, no, no that no. would be no, no good no. lord. Yeah, and yeah, the, it, yeah again, not, incredible, incredible yeah. show for, yeah, for, uh, just but, too long. Yeah, 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 yeah be, uh, either way, sticky. there's still a lot of good shit out there to watch, and that's why physical, physical media is important. I could grab anything off that shelf and watch it, and that's what I did. Because I could and I wanted to. Except for National Treasure, apparently, bitch. Cry me a river. Right. <laughs> Cry me a river. You, anyway. All right, guys. We gotta watch the second one. Uh well, hey, on we, hey listen, yeah, every time we start there. a franchise, it opens the door to come back to it. Mm -hmm. Listen, we've started Lethal Weapon, we started all kinds of stuff on drive in, and we just come back to it. Oh, the only time we do something repeated is when we did Lord of the Rings. We did that back to back for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. Or when we do Star Wars, because this, like, like I said, this in May, uh, once Jed gets back uh, after the first week of May, we're going to do prequel trilogy all the way up to Star Wars Day. So we're, we're nailing it. We're going to have fun Are with it. Are we doing Either the way. Clone Wars movie? Uh, no, Ooh. that can go suck a dick. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not so great. Bad. It's no, really not great. Bad. No, it's not. Anyway, all right, guys, we're done here. We are very over time as normal, but we didn't have anywhere else to go, so it was fine. Let's go around the horn, say our – our pimp, pimp our stuff and then i'm gonna make a big ziti so jed what you got going on this week um <laughs> i am so busy with book stuff that the only thing i do this week on my channel might be saturday night drive-in for the fourth week in a row uh legitimately the last three items on my channel are all saturday night drive-in I'm going to try to get back to my channel at some point, but book stuff is just insane right now. So yeah. you can tune into Saturday Night Drive-In on my show and Adam's. He'll talk about that at the end, I'm sure. But you can find me at YouTube and Kick, Hollywood Scholar, when I get around to doing anything. And I know uh, I mentioned it kind of in the midst of everything, but while um, you both uh, rated Fallout, as of right now, Fallout's a five or a six mm -hmm. for me. So I'm definitely lower than the rest of you guys. And Writer's Corner, someday. It was never really a regular thing. I've only yeah, done four episodes in three years. So it's it's kind of like a a, a quarterly thing almost. It's and and yeah. we need to and we need to have a thing to talk about and, and give people we, time to actually do some writing. Yeah, and because because I barely got anything done for as I promised it was either way. All <laughs> right. So uh Ryan, what you got coming out this week? Oh, so tomorrow night we're going to be doing House of the Dragon uh, Season 1, Episode Number 3, I believe, review. Um, doing it kind of like that Star Trek style. Um, what can I say? I, I I dabble in pissing YouTube off, which I'm fine with. Um, yeah, like, uh, and we're, we're hard charging towards uh, House of the Dragon Season 2. So it's um, we're, we're going to be real methodical about House of the Dragon, all of us. Um, you know, so catch that there um i might try to squeeze in some fallout streams because I'm, I'm i'm all of a sudden jones again for some fallout i got the itch 
Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm actually thinking about replaying Fallout One, which it's been so damn long. It's going to hey, be it's retro. You might. Get it's going to be very comical. Retro. Yeah. Uh, also, at the same time, it seems to work on my my you know my RTX uh, freaking computer to where Fallout Three I can't get the work worth dick. So I don't <laughs> understand. But um, so yeah, uh, and then a uh, Friday Night's Royal Rumble um, and um, shit. You know, it's just um, I, I pop up here and there. And uh, Ariel, I don't want to read Fallout. But Equestria. That sounds awful. No horse Ariel, no horseplay. No horseplay. No horse. Play. That sounds terrible. Dragon Lady. Got anything coming up this week? Um, been simming. Um just basically simming really. Um possible. You know, if the EA app's working. Other than that, um, not a lot really. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, as for myself, uh uh, let's see. Tonight, nothing on the schedule tonight because everybody's still getting back from Vegas. Although I think next next week is when Devil's going to restart, get ranked. I'm supposed to be on that one. Uh, the next one was Wrestling uh, Faces. So uh, I think that's next week. Uh, tomorrow, it's Monday, which means Mel Mondays is back. Devil will be back. Uh, Sammy will probably be there. Doors are open. We never know what's going to happen. I do have some topics. There's some older topics from last week. But I'm going to roll them out there. We're going to have a little discussion, talk here and there. We'll probably hear some stories from Vegas, from Devil as well, see how that went, if uh, they actually did do anything mean to Dermy, which it sounds like they didn't because he sounded so happy last night on Twitter when he got home, which hurts me a little bit because I don't want to see Dermy happy. It's not right. Anyway, uh, rest of the week, Natural 20 on Wednesday. I'm sure I'll be pissed off about something by then. Throughout the week, uh, no scheduled gaming streams because we finished Rebirth last week. Go watch it. It's all right there. Have a good time between the live streams and the and the uploaded stuff. We are now starting Final Fantasy XIV. A lot of people you know in our immediate circle are getting involved. I have been playing a little bit the past couple of days. That's kind of what I'm going to probably do tonight just for myself because I'm trying to get back into it, get ready, get fresh, get going. But the boys and some of the gals are getting back in. They're going to get signed up. We're all going to congregate. And then the streams will start. There will probably be multiple streams uh, where we're all doing shit. We're gonna, we, we need to organize the discords. We need to organize how it's going to work. So it's going to take some time. I've been working on it behind the scenes, adding people to who's going to come on. So be on the lookout for that. It will happen on my gaming channel. Renaissance Third Arcade. Go subscribe to that. Let's get that moving. Uh, no uh, – well, well, I guess – uh, tonight, you will probably get, as I said earlier, you'll get my final Fallout, Fallout review. I just got to edit it together, throw some 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 screen caps in there, make sure I don't sound stupid in some cases, and you'll get that out there any anytime in the next few hours because I need to go. I gotta I gotta make dinner. I'm hungry, and I gotta I gotta start from scratch a whole goddamn thing. So it's gonna take a while. Uh, no other major views unless I think this Rebel Moon Part Two on the nineteenth is that on the nineteenth? I think is it's it the 19th. that soon. I think it's the nineteenth. Are so you know, I think, I, yeah, it should be ne next week. It's so it, that will happen next week, which means I'm sure we're going to talk about it next week. So if Rebel Moon happens at an appropriate moment, you'll get my review on that. Similar to the last one I reviewed it, I'm just going to run right through it at hyperspeed and shit all over what is likely to be stupid. Uh, and let's see anything else. Anything else? Oh yeah. That little thing called ball busters. I'll be back on ball busters this week. Cause it'll be back to normal. And then next Saturday, Saturday night drive in Jed and I will be watching hunt for the red October. We're going to watch that. Have a good time. I wanted a, I wanted something serious this week. I wanted <laughs> a serious movie and that is some good old fashioned Tom Clancy goodness. And, uh, no Ariel, uh, I will uh, do the Klingon playthrough when I'm when I goddamn feel like it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's it. Anyway, other than that, we'll be back here. Oh wait, wait! I got to promote one thing. Two weeks from now, Anime Odyssey monthly anime show right here on mine and simulcast on Dermy's channel. We will be watching that time I got reincarnated as a slime season one because season three just started. So I'm excited to revisit it for the fourth or fifth time as I wait for season three to complete. So that's a good one. Join us there. Uh, we have a guest. I just want to make sure he's still coming before I put it out there. Uh, make sure he's still going to be there. Join us on that. I believe, let me check. It would be uh, Thursday, April 25th. So Thursday, April 25th, probably 
uh, 7.30 or 8.30 p.m. Eastern, depending on how we go there. So join us for that so you guys can get watching now. It's a full season, 24 episodes. So you want to get on it now if you have, don't have a lot of time to do a binge watch on that. Get on that. And as then the next week, we'll be right back here, 2 p.m. Eastern, for more Roundtable, where I'm, we'll probably talk Rebel Moon Part 2. And I'm sure there'll be other insane things that will happen this week because guess what? It's Western pop culture. Shit happens and we're here for it. So thanks everybody here. Thank you, Ryan, for joining us this week while yeah, Dre really. was off doing his thing. And we appreciate you all in the chat. Thank you one and all for being here without you. We don't get to do anything. You are here because well, we're here because you enjoyed us and hit that like button, subscribe to everybody's channels below, and we will see you next week. Enjoy some Tifa going out the door.